Hello, everyone, and welcome to the USPA Polo Network. We are here for the finals of the CV Whitney Cup 2023 edition. We're going to have Pilot taking on Valiente. I'm Toby Wayman. Joined with me, as always, is Cody Off. And Cody, so good to be with you today for this fantastic Thank game. Thank you, Toby. Indeed, it should be a fantastic game. Pilot against Valiente. Facundo Pires against Adolfo Cambiasso. I don't need to say much more than that. Absolutely. That's true. All right. Well... Let's dive right into it. They're getting warmed up. We're going to get the uh, parade going here in a second. But back for the first time since 2018, when Facundo and Adolfo played together, they went 16-1 and one that season, losing only the uh, the U.S. Open final game is going to be Adolfo Cambiasso. He, uh, they, they opened up the victories against La Lina, 11-6. Then they beat Aspen um, with a 17-12 uh, score on this field. But let's go ahead and check out right now that video of Valiente. So we take a look there at that at the video of, of, of how Valiente made it here to the finals today. And I tell you what, this is a great team here, Cody. We've got two young upcoming superstars in their own right. Pekka Gonzalez with Lucas Criado. And then also Bob Dranov is coming back for the first time in a while here. We're so happy to have him back. But Adolfo, the master himself, you know, he's back on the field today. I mean, what more can you say about Valiente? Well, like you said, Bob, back for the first time, and I'm sure he's very happy to have Adolfo Cambiasso on this team. And as you saw there, they've had some impressive wins. They've scored a ton of goals. But, of course, they're going up against a very strong pilot team who has been very dominant since Valiente's been out of the fold. And they've had some closer matchups on their way to this final. A few one-goal games, actually, Toby. Yeah, let's take a look at their video right now.
Well, here's a good look right now of the man himself, Facundo Pires. He has just been lights out. I mean, he's been had such a fantastic year all the way around. Tell us a bit more about it, his, uh, his year so far, Cody. Yeah, dominant force, of course, leading the tournament so far in scoring. He had 10 goals in the semifinal win against Shaq Attack. And you can see on your screen right now, those are his statistics from the penalty line. He's only missed one penalty four throughout the whole tournament. So <sighs> he's shooting 93%, a pretty unbelievable record. And Toby, we actually had a little conversation with Facundo. Uh, before this final. So let's see what he had to say about that hard-fought victory. A very good team, and especially this time of the season, uh, it was very hard to beat them. So happy that we did it because it, it could have gone the other way and uh, we're going to give us the chance in another final. So that's that's very good for us. Uh, I mean, it's a very good team and it's very difficult to to... To, to try to play our game because they make you run and they make you get tired uh, but as soon as we could control those things and we could stop a little bit and not run with the ball that whenever we didn't run with the ball we were doing good plays and whenever we were running with the ball we were making it more easy for them uh, but Valiente showed at the end uh, their, their horses, their ability I think Peque Gonzalez is playing really really good on six goals and, um, and of course, Geta uh, coming into the game. And if it is not Geta, we'll play Adolfo or whatever. Whoever plays there is going to be tough. Mm. But uh, we're going to try to enjoy it. And I mean, we're, we, we're in the final. And that's, that's what I like about this game, to play finals, to give you the chance to win. Mm. And uh, so we're going to give it our best. Okay, so, well, you know, F Facundo talked about it right there, Cody, about Heta Castagnola coming in to take the place of Adolfo Cambiaso. So he missed the semifinals. Why don't we look at his contribution to getting Valiente here to this final real quick? All right, so there you go. Good look at Heta Castagnola coming in. You know, he, uh, Adolfo had a family emergency, um, and so he wasn't able to play the semifinals. I believe he had to go back to Argentina for the day and really kind of came back pretty quick after that. Um, we're getting ready for a parade now. What do you think, Cody? Well, just, you know, off of that video, you wonder if Adolfo might – miss a beat after missing the semi but i don't think so just as Heta came in last minute to fill in for adolfo you saw the performance he put on it took them a couple chuckers to get rolling in that semi in that semi-final but once lukitas and peke kind of got used to playing with Heta, which pretty impressive it only took them about 14 minutes they really played lights out in that game and i have a feeling now we're especially going to see peke and lukitas perform really well in this final because you know they play a little bit different style with Adolfo he's so good back there allowing these two young superstars to play their game and you know when he if he has to turn it on he turns it on a little extra yeah well you know the mark of a, of a truly great player um, and this goes in any sport and in and, and anything any business you think about the mark of a truly great player is that he brings out the best in his teammates and it's been said for 20 years when a player plays with Adolfo Cambiasso, uh, they play at least a goal better on, than their handicap. And that's what we're seeing here. Plus, the other thing is, is that Peque and, and Luquitas, they're also playing together with uh, Iconica in the Wellington Polo Tour, too. They've already won both the first two tournaments. That gives them a guaranteed spot into the, into the Super Series finals. But, um, so they've been, they've been playing together you know, this whole season, and a lot of games they've been playing. But Adolfo is the master. You know, he's, he's 
There'll never be another one like him. Well, there might be. His son, Peroto's coming out now, who's starting to already show us that he's just, a, you know, just as talented. When we talk about the, the pilot team, though, you know, we've got a bit of a replacement here. We had Colo Gonzalez actually had his hand broken the first game of the Wellington Polo Tour uh, that he played with with La Lina. And so he's out for another week. I talked to Facundo a couple days ago, and he said that uh, Colo's already starting to practice again. And they're hoping to get him back soon. But in the meantime, I think Lucas, uh, Lucas Escobar has done a great job filling in for him. So, you know, but there again, different, different player to Colo Gonzalez. Um, and I think Lucas has done a fantastic job coming in. You know, he did get to play with this team in 2020, but that season got sh- cut, got cut short because of COVID. So I know that, you know, I spoke to Lucas's mother. She felt like he didn't really get a chance to show. So she was really excited when he got this, this uh, opportunity to play here again for pilot and to see what they can do. And well, look, they made it to the, to the finals already. Absolutely different player than Colo Gonzalez, but, when you look at Lucas Escobar, the type of player he is, he can really kind of play wherever you need him to. Yep. And I think he's fit into this team quite well. But when you need him to go be aggressive, you know, bump and bang and make holes out there, he can certainly do that. And he's very good offensively as well if they need him, if he gets the opportunity. What I've noticed so far, from, especially in that semifinal, you don't see a whole lot of Lucas Escobar on your screen because usually he's locked up with one of the best players on the other team riding them well off the field. And I thought he did a phenomenal really good job of that in the semifinal especially allowing Facundo Pires to do his thing and score 10 goals in yeah that game. on that very evenly matched team there where all four players are of higher, higher handicap you're right uh what I thought what I've been seeing and that I think is so much fun to watch with this pilot team is watching uh Matias Torres Zavaleta when he goes behind Facundo Facundo's one of the best goal scorers in the world why not use him that way right now we're at the center of the field we're gonna have our uh, national anthem be it sung here. So this is going to be Rene. Bear with me on this one. This is a hard name. Rovnayak. Rovnayak. She's a 21 year old recording artist from Wellington. She performs and shows at the Lake Worth Playhouse. But right now, we're going to go fieldside for her to sing our national anthem. Wow, Renee, what a beautiful voice. I'm not even going to try to say her last name again. I don't want to butcher it again, but she did a great job there. We've got the voice of Polo himself, Tony Coppola, here fieldside, going to be announcing to the crowd. He's going to introduce our teams. We're going to start off with Valiente here playing number one. Bob Jernavis playing number two today is going to be Peke Gonzalez, who has just been showing some great stuff. Then Lucas Criado Jr. in the number three position playing number four today is the one and only Adolfo Cambiasso. They're going to go get on some fresh horses here. They're first trucker horses as we're going to do our pilot introduction here. Curtis is going to be playing the number one position, Curtis Pilot, followed up by Lucas Escobar right here, Lukey. And then number three today is going to be Matias Torres Zavaleta with an eight-goal handicap and bringing up the rear playing the number four position is Facundo Pires, another just phenomenal, phenomenal player right here. Now, when we talk about going back over to get those first shucker horses, well, first of all, let's go ahead and talk about our our officiating crew here today. So on the field, well, after we do our handicaps, we can look at our handicaps, uh, or excuse me, not handicaps, but like the uh, stats here for each player for Valiente. So you get a look at the picture. You can see right there, 10 goals, 7 goals, 1 assist. Lucas with 17 goals. 
Then we take a look at Pilot. Look at that. 28 goals for Facundo. Wow. That's something there, Cody. I tell you what. And now we'll take a look. Uh, we have our coin toss coming up right now for choice of directions with the two captains. And it looks like Bob is, must have won the, the choice of directions. We've got Gaston Lucero and Kimo Huddleston in the saddle today. We've got Martin Pascual as the third man. And we've got uh, Hector Galindo as our penalty box official. And those two teams have gone back to get on their first Shucker Horses. I always talk about it because, you know, you got this, uh, this opening day or the you know, feature game of the week here from the U.S. Polo Aces in field number one. You've got your ceremonial parade, your introductions. You've got the national anthem, all that. Players usually like to start off on a spare that's nice and calm to do all that. Then they go back and get on their first Shucker Horse because, you know, Polo Horses are the most finely tuned equine athletes on the face of the earth. They do have to do everything that a cutting horse, a reining horse, and a race horse does all at the same time for seven and a half minutes. And they – get just as nervous about the game as we do, uh, Cody. You know as well as I do that if you were to play, most guys, you know, start on their first chucker horse to go through all that, those horses will wash themselves out. They'll be lathered up like they've already played a whole chucker for the first throw in. Absolutely, especially with all the extra added excitement here on U.S. Polo ASSN field number one. And some really good horse flesh out here today. Obviously, Toby, two of the top organizations in the world. But couple to keep your eye on in this first chucker. Adolfo is going to be coming out on Dolphina Maria. That's a horse that we want to highlight here today. One of his best. And obviously, Adolfo, not a bad horse in the barn. Yeah. But keep an eye on Adolfo throughout the game, especially in chucker number one. This Dolphina Maria mare is absolutely spectacular. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, while we've got a minute here, while they're getting warmed up, why don't we go ahead and check out our, our first chucker horse list for each team? We can keep looking at these. Well, we'll start with the pilot horses, actually. We're going to see Curtis on open. Frazada, Lucas Escobar starting on Hueza. Mati Torres Zavaleta is on CP Trillion. And Facundo Pires on open Irani, another fantastic. Oof. 15-year-old Argentine chestnut mare from Grappa Casino in Open Chita. It's owned by Pilot Polo, bred by Ellerstina. On the flip side here are the rest of the Valiente horses, Dolphina Austral for Bob Gernavis. That's a good horse. Yeah, fantastic horse. Luquitas Criado on Latia Fara and Peque Gonzalez on Cinco. This is a fantastic horse. He loves to start on it. Gives him a lot of confidence. Gray Gelding, owned by Peque. For our longtime viewers, you may know this horse is five, but yeah. <laughs> it's actually Cinco, however you want to slice it. Yeah. It is. That was a translation error digit, on our part. Yeah. Numerical digit five, yep. often in quotation marks, as Peke gives it to us. So Cinco. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, we're talking about these fantastic horses. Well, you know, we also, we've got some really impressive stats that we could, we could, we could talk about here too, for both these teams, Cody, I like to leave most of the stat work to you because you, you're so good at all that stuff. Um, tell us a little bit about the stats before we have this first throw in here. Well, yeah, these teams obviously very good offensively and you can see how evenly matched up they are goal wise pilot, a little bit under the 13.3 goals per game mark Valiente was able to put up. But you can see the shots at goal, penalty shots, That's fouls committed, throw-ins, almost all dead even. So, you know, it's a bit of a coin flip out here today for who's going to win this game. I know a lot of people have their picks in. But when you look at it on paper here, Toby, it's a great <laughs> matchup. It's really tough to see. You know, it might come down to who has the better day, whose horses it's, maybe have yeah. the extra step. It's going to come down to, yeah, you know, luck is, is going to be a big part of it. What is luck? They always say luck is when uh, preparation meets opportunity. And I always say you have to be good to be lucky and lucky to be good. And, yeah, absolutely. Very true there. So we're going to start this one off. It looks like uh, De Valiente did win their choice of directions. So they're going to have the offensive side of the throw-in. We're going to start this throw-in off. We're going to have – it looks like it's going to be umpire Kimo Huddleston is going to start – with the throw, and he's going to throw the ball at center cam high. Here we go. Both teams line up. Ball's in play. Game's back underway. Adolfo's going to win this first throw in right here. No. Yeah, he does. Adolfo takes off with it. Cambiasso with an open back shot right there into Facundo. He picks it back up. He's going to be challenged by Adolfo, and we're going to get a whistle right here. Unusual to see Adolfo kind of give up almost a unforced error there, really. Kind of just fell right into Facundo when he went to meet that ball. 
early mistake here, and that will put Facundo on the penalty line. Certainly not a spot you want to be in if you're Valiente. And here it is one more time, the back shot, and he comes in and, yeah, just reaching across, and his horse's head runs into Facundo there a little bit, and that's going to go all the way down to a penalty two here for the 93% penalty shooting Facundo Pires. 93%. Wow. Okay, penalty number two for Pilot. 30-yard undefeated shot on goal, making a miss it. He'll get one swing at the ball. Riding open and Ronnie here. Straight on through. No trouble to put the first point of the day on the board. Facundo gets his team on the board. And that, I, that he's already in the uh, high score, isn't he? Isn't he the... Yeah, that gives him 29 total goals. Yeah. He also leads everybody with now 16 penalty goals. Excuse me, 14 penalty goals. And the other 15 coming from the field for Facundo Pires. Whoa. Okay, now we're going to have Pilot with the offensive side of the throw-in. Keep an eye right here on Lucas Escobar. He's going to win this throw-in right here. He goes, Lucas. Now, he hits a neck shot back over for Facundo. And now it's picked up here by Matias Torres Zavaleta. Zavaleta has got Adolfo beat right here. He's going, excuse me, Facundo's got Adolfo beat. And Facundo will pick up the second goal of the game. Back-to-back -back goals for Facundo. First one from the field. Fantastic play by Lucas Escobar, and I guarantee you his mom, Georgette, is going crazy right now. Well, a lot of Pilot fans going wild in the stands here today, Toby. ton of fans at this one. What a play. Once again, Adolfo can't get the hook down. Facundo Pires, again, on open Iran. He loves to Ooh. start on this horse as well, and a good start here for Pilot. Like you said, maybe just catching Valiente asleep a little bit out of the gates. Here comes Peque right here. He's going to get this one on the backside of this throw in. Watch this right here. There he goes. Peque on Cinco, won it for a moment, and then it's going to be taken, taken back uh, by Matias Torres. Now here comes Adolfo to pick up that ball, turn it back to the inside of the defender. Adolfo will let, uh-oh, that didn't work. Now it does. Lucas Criado with that ball. Criado gets out of there with that ball. Facundo makes the hook and tries to steal it back. Can't quite get a hold of that ball, and now it's going to be Adolfo here on the ball. Adolfo working this ball back past midfield right here. He's got Matias Torres all over him. He's got... Well, Matias is going to Adolfo. Adolfo couldn't get past Facundo. Here comes the open back shot. Now it's going to be Facundo to pick that ball back up. He takes off running. Facundo starting off very strong here in the first chucker. Takes that ball on the bounce back to the left. Centers this one up. He shoots at the goal from distance outside the 60. Lucas is there to back him up. He doesn't connect, and it's going to be Adolfo once again on the ball. Adolfo turns this one back around to the right all the way. Lucas there to put him in the pocket. He's going to go ahead and send it off to the right-hand side. Lucas should stay with Adolfo right there. And now it's going to be Peke trying to bust through those defenders. But he's taken out right here by uh, Facundo, who keeps this one going. Facundo reaches out underneath the horse to try to keep this one alive. He drops it back, and it's going to be picked up again by Luquitos Criado. Criado with a neck shot. Back over. Trying to get that ball over to an offensive player here. It's going to be taken again by Matias Torres. He'll be challenged right here by Peke. Oh, coming in now. He's still got that ball. Mati, such a nice guy. Hits a neck shot over to the left-hand side where he's looking for Facundo. Facundo's going to get there. What a play right here. Facundo cuts it back down, looking for Curtis. And, oh, I'm surprised. We'll see a whistle right here. Let's see which way they decide to blow this one. I think they're probably going to catch Gonzalez for riding underneath the swing of, Adolf, of, of Facundo because I think he had to give up the offside and go near side right here. Yeah, we could take another look at it, but you might be right, Toby, and some early foul trouble here for Valiente. Surprised they didn't get a one meeting two right there, actually. And so we'll we'll wait for the official word here from the umpires. You can see right here, Facundo yeah. comes down. Peke finds that ball on his offside, so a penalty two for Pilot. Second two of the day. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Facundo is going to make a short approach right here. These are two of the top teams in two or the top organizations in the game in South Florida right now. Some of the best horses. You're not going to see a bad horse today. Look at that. Beautiful play right there. Facundo, he's just been in on another level pretty much, I feel like, since last year. You know, He's just playing very, very well. I don't want to jinx the guy, but he's starting off really strong here today. 
well and a really good start here for pilot but as you know toby if anybody can turn it around it's adolfo oh. this valiente team these guys are not going to be intimidated at all being down three goals early like this Adolfo, but... watch him in the flowing right yeah there he goes he goes into the number one position sorry to cut you off i saw him going up there and i was like uh oh here we go he's going to sneak in there We're trying to get something offensive going he cuts it over to peke to the right peke is going to be put in the pocket here by lucas he's going to hit a short shovel pass back up there knocked down by curtis and now it's a back shot here for matias torres Zavaleta. He holds. He's got Lucas going downfield. He's got Facundo coming in behind. He'll leave that ball for Facundo and take the man. Facundo slips back to the left, looking to create a little bit of space for himself right here, trying to get Peke to look over the wrong shoulder. Then he'll break back the other direction. He'll leave it now for Matias Torres. Zavaleta holds the ball. Now he'll leave it again for Facundo, who now takes back off to the center. Facundo, look at how these guys, they're, they're doing such great transitions with each other. Switching back off now. It looks like Facundo gets away from Peke, but he's supposed to. He's 10 goals. He leaves that ball there for Curtis. Well done, Curtis. Nice try. Now it's going to be Adolfo trying to get there. Clean play, and here goes Adolfo. Takes off running back down. Now having a little trouble with that bouncing ball. He's getting hooked at the same time as Matias pulls out of his way. Adolfo wants a whistle there. Doesn't find it yet. And now Matias comes in to put Adolfo in the pocket. Adolfo looks to find the seam. Off to the right-hand side. He, side. he does right here where he's now going to find Lucas Criado. Criado is going to go ahead and run this one back at the goal. He's looking good. He's in the zone. He's not going to miss. He's right there. He's going to get his team on the board and make the score 3-1 to one here in Chucker number one with 2.10 left to go on the clock. And Criado going for a quick change. What a pass. What a pickup. Great approach shot. Beautiful finish. Luquitas Criado. So good offensively. Love that little neck shot. He kind of stopped the follow through on purpose to get the angle he was looking for and then an easy tap in there. You can see he just kind of chops at it. Does just that on purpose, to move it over, though. didn't he? Yep. Yeah, a little tap finish. Okay. Beautifully done. Watch Criado. I feel like he's hot right now. He's going to win this one right here. It's Criado. He wins that throwing. Now he's going to go ahead and hit it back down to the Peke, Peke picks up the pass right here. Peke going to the goal. He's got his man beat. He's in the red zone. We've got a one-goal ball game now. Well done, Peke. And this is what we're expecting to see out of Valiente. Just those quick plays like that out of the throw and hitting the pass. Peke's going to be gone. He's going to be pulling the team all day long, and he does that right here. Well, they get off to a rough start, but they only needed about 30 seconds of actual game time to get this back to a one-goal game. What a pass, and the cut shot what from Peke Gonzalez. Beautiful. All right, here we go. Coming back in. Now, keep an eye, Adolfo. He's going up to that number one position again. He's going to win this throw-in right here. Adolfo, there he goes. He does it again. He takes off with the ball. Now, Adolfo Cambiasso waits. He winds up. He fires back down, looking for Peke. Once again, Peke there, always pushing forward. He cuts it back at the goal. It's This one's going to get away from him, go over the back line wide. We're going to have a knock-in for Pilot, and that's just what they need there. They started off strong, then all of a sudden, Valiente wakes up. And now we see the first chink in the armor offensively here for Valiente. And we'll see here. It looks like Facundo letting the clock expire. And it does appear to be the case. The ball will be out of play when the warning horn sounds. So that's going to end our first chucker of play. So let's take a look at uh, some of Adolfo's highlights from earlier in the CV Whitney Cup right now. Man, Adolfo, he's still just a master, isn't he, Cody? Absolutely, and quickly getting his team back into this game right at the end of the chucker there, 3-2. to two. And obviously, a really hot start for the pilot team and Facundo Pires. Two penalty, two goals, and one from the field. And 
Both of these 10 goalers obviously have some pretty prolific gauntlet stats. We can take a look, Toby. Yeah. At some of these stats here, you can see CV Whitney Cup. Facundo has the advantage, but then it's Adolfo. 12 USBA Gold Cup victories Ooh. and nine US Open Polo Championships, trying to make it double digits this year with Valiente. But not to undermine Facundo Pires, six CV Whitney Cups, three Gold Cups, three US Opens. That's very impressive. Absolutely. And there she is. There's my mare right here. This is one of my favorite horses of Adolfo's. This horse is actually sired by uh, Popular, the one of, of, of Sapo Cassettes that we love so much that originally came from Adolfo. I'm pretty sure it came from Adolfo, but look at this mare. If you, you can tell this mare's uh, father is definitely Popular, but yeah. this is Paloma. Delfina Popular and Delfina Codorniz, my, my pronunciation there. Better than mine. <laughs> it's uh, and bred by Doña Sofia. Okay, let's check out our f second chucker horse list right fast. Definitely always want to highlight this mare because I tell you what, she is just unbelievable. Okay, so here we go for your pilot horses. Yeah, Curtis Pilot coming out on open cafeteria. Lucas is on open. Open Exclusiva, Matias Torres Avaleta on GT Veracruz, and Facundo will be on Chapa Cabulera. Okay. We can take a look at the Valiente horses really quickly. Again, keep your eye on Paloma here. Yeah, that's my, my favorite horse right now. Here come, <clears throat> since since uh, since uh, Mag Magnifico was retired this year, unfortunately, it breaks my heart to say, but there it is. Here we go. It's going to be Matias Torres Zavaleta holding that ball as Adolfo comes back in to put him in the pocket, and it's going to be picked off right here by Facundo. He takes the ball back into Valiente territory to catch a pick there from Zavaleta. Now, this is what I was talking about before. I like to see Zavaleta behind Facundo. Facundo trying to get away from those defenders. He takes off running right here. Look at that horsepower underneath him. He keeps it alive, takes it back over towards the boards. He gets hit right here. By Peke. Peke trying to get back in there to make a play. Well done. Look at that. Great pick right there by Zavaleta. And now Facundo having a little trouble with that ball. He gets it back under control. He's going to go ahead, pump fake, and then go back to the right right here because he sees that he's got uh, Zavaleta doing work for him right there. But this shot's going to get away from him. Go wide. We'll have a knock-in now for Valiente. Their first of the day. Dolfito. Will bring the ball into play. He takes it off to the right. He's going to hit a pass. Not a whole lot of angle on this one, which means that Facundo's going to, well, he's going to let it go right there. He's going to let Lucas have that one. I'm surprised. I thought he was going to go to it. Now, Criado trying to duck and dive and bob and weave, but it looks like he rode himself into the player, and we're going to get a whistle right here. It looks like they're going to call Bob here for, for standing in the right of way. Yeah, you could see Zavaleta in front. He was appealing for the foul as well, which makes me think he was not pushing the player into the right-of-way. But we'll take a look at the replay here. You can see Jernavis, number one on his jersey in the back there. Coming up in just a moment, Criado makes a great play and break. And yeah, I think we're going to see, like you said, Jernavis called there for standing over the right-of-way. Penalty five from midfield, it looks like here, Toby, for... Pilot. Three two stands the score right now. Okay. Wow, we got people tuned in from all over the place here, Cody. I just checked out some comments there on Facebook. Here comes Facundo. He's gonna leave that ball now for uh oh. Okay, this is a good time right now. Looks like he drilled Adolfo right in the back of the shoulder there. But one thing that Fergus Gould made clear to me yesterday when we're talking about, you know, um, dangerous use of the mallet place where, you know, if a, if a, if a, a ball gets hit into a horse, um, if you're within it, the, the rule comes back to being within two horse lengths. So right here, this could be, you know, hitting into the player, hitting into the horse. This could be a penalty. We'll find out what they're going to do with it. But uh, you got to be within two horse lengths. And if you're in, and then it comes into, you know, who, if, if the right of way is clear, as long as the defender is, is not in the right of way and the guy with the ball hits into him or his horse, it'll be a foul on the guy uh, that hit the ball. If, if the right of way is not clear, if the, if the defender comes in and puts himself in between in the right of way within two horse lengths and gets hit, then it's going to be a foul on him. So um, right here, I kind of feel like this was 
I don't know. I'm not even going to take a guess. I'm going to wait and see what happens here. Yeah, it was tough for us to see exactly if, you know, if Adolfo was standing in front of the right of way or not. I'm I have a feeling he wasn't because he got hit on his left shoulder. Yeah, he's on his feet. I was hoping at first it didn't hit his elbow. It seems like it did hit him in the back of the shoulder. Going to leave a mark for sure. But as you know, Toby, if that ball hits you in the back of the elbow area, it can break bones very easily. Very easily. Split you open pretty easily as well. But Adolfo out there, the way he's acting makes me assume he's going to continue in this game. That would be one heck of a blow. Obviously, losing Adolfo, they had to go without him in the semifinal. But Adolfo ready to jump back up in the saddle, it looks like here. By One the way, customer. yeah, we've got uh, Chris Curley tuned in here. He actually made the spurs for the for this for the uh, the trophies for the CV Whitney Cup. I saw him on on, on uh, social media. They're beautiful spurs. But he says, can't wait to see who wins the trophy spurs I made for this tournament. So that's great. Good to have him tuning in. And then we've got. Uh, Marizi says on sofa with a beer. I like to hear that. Well, that's good. Having have a nice beer there. Now Adolfo's mounted back up. Looks like we're ready to get the game back underway, and we'll find out what the play is going to be here. So they're going to get a yellow card, dangerous use of the mount, going against Matias Torres Zavaleta for hitting Adolfo. And they're announcing that right now. So there's your yellow card against Matias Torres with 5.44 left to go in the second chucker of play here. He's got to be careful for the rest of the day now. Yes, he does, unfortunately. So I imagine this will go from the spot up to center with the yellow card. Okay. Here going in favor of Valiente. Looking to get this game tied up with their third straight goal. There she is. Oh, look at that, man. She's just gorgeous. Paloma. Okay, Adolfo Cambiasso makes a short approach. Tells me he's going to bring this one in. Now, Dolfito is going to go ahead and hit to the goal. Just off to the right. Can't quite get it to Peque. The ball gets knocked down. It'll be picked up here by Facundo. He's going to go ahead and drop it back there to Zevaleta. Zevaleta with the ball. He's trying to get look at doing a great look at Criado. Staying right there with Facundo. Not letting Facundo come back around to pick up that ball. So Matias has to keep it to himself as he's going to get away from Adolfo. And then it's going to be Lucas Criado there to back him up. Good play right here by Peke. Makes the hook all well done. Lucas Escobar. But Peke gets back on it. Peke hammers that shot back towards the scoreboard into the field where he's going to find Criado on a breakaway run right here. Criado picks it up, takes it back. He's inside the 60 or in the 40. He's in the red zone. He shoots and he's going to send it on through and pick up his second goal of the game. We've got a tie ball game now here in Chucker number two. What a play by Peke Gonzalez to set this goal up for Criado. Insane neck shot assist there from Peke, and then Oof. Criado comes in and just wicked ball handling. He's so accurate with that shot. He's able to change his shot when he needs to. You can see the quick swing there, so nobody can get a hook on him. Kind of keeps that mallet tight. Little chop shot at the goal. These kids are unbelievable, Toby. All right, Facundo's going to try the same thing that Adolfo's been doing here and win this throw in. Right here, here he goes, Facundo. Goes up in that number one position. He wins the throw and He takes off running right now, Facundo. With the ball, sucks it back to the left, trying to force Adolfo to get out of his way. He, now he's able to keep it away from Peke. Now he gets away. He's going to hit a short pass right there. It's deflected. Going to be picked up again right here by Curtis. Well done, Curtis. Pilot his shot down inside the red zone. That's picked up once again now by Criado. Lucas gets away. Look at these two fighting right here. Now he's going to leave that ball for Adolfo. And Adolfo, uh-oh, that's going to be a costly mistake right here. Beca oh. Wow. All right. For now, Priado working this one back on down. Curtis doing his best to put a stop. Uh-oh, looks like Curtis is going to get caught right there. Or maybe Matias Torres. I don't know. We'll see what happens here. It does appear, though, is it's going to go in favor of Valiente. One way. Oh, we got a stirrup iron and leather right up there at the top of the screen. Somebody lost. Yeah, take another look at it. Pilot coming in. I think his horse ends up kicking that ball, so likely going to be called for that if not seemed like he kind of drifted over didn't he? here yeah i'm not sure if the you know they're going to call the first foul maybe or something else after the fact but there you can see getting the debris cleared up off the field 
So this one likely, well, there again, waiting for the uh, official ruling to come in from the field. But one thing I love to, uh, you know, I love about the Valiente team here, you know, Adolfo, you know how Adolfo is. I mean, he's just, he's, he's a straight master, but Lucas Criado Jr., the kid never looks like he's rushed. You know, he looks like he's under control all the time. Everything he does looks methodical. Um, Peke's a hustler. He's running, gunning, going for it here. But Lucas is always that calm, cool, collected, just very, very chill player. Even when he's, even when he is rushing, he doesn't look that way. He's going to he's going to go ahead and tee up this penalty number two. And this will give Valiente a chance to break the tie and take the lead for the first time today. I know exactly what you're saying, but it will see. Yeah, Peke is definitely a hustler for sure. But I don't know if that. I don't know if, if his emotions ever changed throughout the game. Talk about a cool customer, Peke Gonzalez. Oh, I know. I don't even know if he smiles. He's out so there. smart though, too, because <laughs> like I talked to him before the finals of the Yoba Soccer Cup, and he said, "You know, look, uh, you might think that Lukitas is like the the consummate number two, which he is." He said, "But he has a tendency to come back around behind." He says, "I don't want him to come back behind. I want to fight for the ball 100 yards downfield, not right here." You know, and it's like that makes perfect sense. All right, Criado has no trouble picking up his third goal of the game, makes the score now 4-3, and Valiente is now in the driver's seat for the first time today. First from the penalty line as well here for Criado. Back to the center we go for another throw in. All right, Adolfo's going back up to that number one position. I have a feeling he's going to take this one right here. Cambiaso's going to win this throw in. Yes, he does. He takes off with that ball. Dolfito now hits it off to the right. And here comes Criado. Lukitas flips that one around on the near side with Matias Torres on his hip, out of the air. That one got gets away from him, though, and it looks like it'll go over the back line wide. So a lucky break there for Pilot. They're going to receive their third knock into the game, second of the chucker. And been a while since Pilot has generated much offense, four straight Valiente goals, so a positive knock-in, maybe a scoring chance. Pretty important right now for Pilot. Absolutely. Okay. Here comes the knock-in. It's back over to the left. Perfect knock-in there with plenty of angle so that only Matias Torres can get to that ball without fear of fouling. He's going to hit it back to the right-hand side where he's looking to find Facundo and Adolfo are coming back to it together. Here comes Adolfo. Open back shot. He drops that one down right there in front of Peke. Peke picks it up. Peke, Gonzalez. Getting into a fight right there with Matias Torres. Peke wins the ride off. Then Matias Torres jumps back around, gets into another sword fight with Peke. He says, Bob, you go in there. Go for it here. And it looks like we're getting a whistle right here. I think they might catch Bob on the reach. Just under two minutes remaining here in chucker number two. Looks like it might be a penalty four here, indeed, for Pilot. Here's the replay. And, yeah, reach or maybe improper use of the mallet there. I don't think there is any additional foul there. Yeah, just a 60. You can see there, Bob, just kind of swinging into the horse a little bit, mistiming that hook. So a penalty four. That puts Facundo Pires on the 60-yard line. Where, as you called earlier, He's been stellar. What is he, 97% shooting penalty shot-wise? Well, he was 93 coming in. He's hit two penalty twos so far, so that increases his percentage. And he's only missed one penalty four all tournament long. Wow. No pressure, Facundo. Okay. Here we go. Facundo makes his approach. Ideally, you want all four feet to be on the ground when you make contact with the ball. Facundo, it's up. It's undefendable. Looks like he might have jerked that one to the left. Yes, he did. So we'll have a knock-in now for Valiente, their second of the game. You know, his penalty fours often do curve, but usually he hits them so hard that curve comes after the goalpost, exactly. maybe just a little extra adrenaline out here in the final. Adolfo hits a straight shot light right here. He knows that Peke's got the horse to get away from his man, so he doesn't need to put angle on that ball. He hits it right up and down the middle. Now Peke sends it back towards the center. Coming in, Criado's going to beat everybody right here except for Criado. Or excuse me, Lucas Escobar. Escobar 
takes that near side back shot, breaks up the play, and now it's going to be Adolfito here to turn this one back around with Matias Torres. Zavaleta showing him a little bit. Uh-oh, that's going to be a costly mistake for Adolfo. It got away from him. Here goes Zavaleta breaking back to the other goal, looking to tie this game up at four goals apiece right here. But this mare's got the speed to catch him. Here he goes. Adolfo trying to get there. He makes the hook and leaves the ball for Peke. Peke comes in. Facundo trying to get back over there. Wow, what a play, Peke. Keeps it away from Facundo. Hits the pass back over to Adolfo. Adolfo now decides to use a little bit more of that horsepower. He's going to check down as Matias Torres comes back around. Trying to put him in the pocket. He's going to have Criado go forward. And, F and Facundo will go with the first man out. Ooh. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, whistle on the play here. Yeah, we'll take a look. Maybe a little... Collision between players there. Penalty two, it looks like, Toby. Yep. Sandwich. All right. So, yeah, we'll take another look at it right here. You can see the, the sandwich here from Curtis and from Lucas Escobar. As Adolfo pounds this one back up here. Lucas goes to take his man. He pushes him right into Curtis. I'm not sure if I'd blow that one on on Curtis or if, I, or, or if you blow that one on Lucas. Curtis, I think, was just kind of in the wrong place at the right time. Regardless, it's going to end up being a penalty number two here for Valiente that gives him a chance to go up by two here in chucker number two. Going to be there. Oh, wow. Hold on now. They're going to get a yellow card on this sandwich on Escobar. And so that means if they make it, they'll come back and get a five from center. The clock will stop right away. If they miss it, they'll get a re-hit. Luquitas sends it on through, and the clock is going to stop immediately. He's going to change on. What's he? Yeah. Okay. No, you know what? All right. So that's it. All right. So the time expires. I want to make sure. No, we're still playing. Yeah, it's center hit for. Yeah, Lucas is coming back. It's center hit now because they got that yellow card assessed on the play. I think Criado was thinking it was Chucker, too, but nevertheless. Well, now he's got a fresh horse, 31 seconds to try to get another one. What a chucker here for Valiente. Potential two-goal goal swing on this play. Yeah, Starting at the end of chucker number one, they've scored five straight after a slow start. They've really turned things around, and they have Pilot back on their heels now. They sure do. You called that one. Pilot yet to score one from the field, too. Here comes Delfito. He brings the ball into play. There's the horn. And now he's going to hit it off to the right-hand side where it's going to be Lucas Criado. He's going to run short on time, so he's going to hit one time back at the goal, if for no other reason than for field position here. And now it's going to be over the back line. That's going to end Chucker number two. Okay, so the score right now stands 5-3 to three with Valiente in the lead, but don't count out Pilot just yet. They've still got plenty of polo left to be played. So that's going to end. We're going to go ahead and uh, we'll be right back here on the USP Apollo Network after the short break.
Welcome back, everyone, to the USPA Polo Network. Getting ready to start the last truck of the first half of the 2023 edition of the CV Whitney Cup. We're gonna we got a good one here coming out for Facundo. He's coming out on Twitter. This chucker, one that uh, he told me to watch out for before their semifinal game. But we've got a let's check out our other horse list here. Tell us a bit more about the other ones here, Cody. Well, yeah, to start with Twitter, you can see British Chestnut Mare here from Livingston by Twiggy, and had a remarkable. England season on this horse, you know, a number of people actually told me to keep an eye out for this one as well. And like you said, Facundo telling us that this is one to watch this season. And then going down the rest of the horse list here, we got, you know, of course, a lot of good horses. Curtis Pilot will be starting this chucker here on Cucharita, Lucas Escobar on Open Exclusiva, another great horse. And Zavaleta will be on At Distinguida. And for Aroba. Aroba. Ah, yes. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Bob Junov for Valiente is on open. Premiata. Peke Gonzalez is on Sapukai. Lucas Criado is on Lac Lapis. And Adolfo is on Taita Carmesi. And this Lac Lapis horse, again, another one of those really good Criado horses. All right. Well, here we go. And a big shout out to Carl Uda Martinez. He's tuned in. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching. Uh, Carl, we miss you over here on the state side, but right now it's going to be picked up right here after the knock-in. It'll be Peke, can't get back to that ball. Little back shot from Adolfo. Now it's going to be Lucas Escobar right there. Keeps that ball away from Criado. Criado was looking to do some poaching. Unable to do so. Criado or Lucas Escobar takes it back. He's going to get away from Adolfo right here. Winds up for the deep neck shot. Nice try from Escobar, but it's over the back line wide. The score stands 5-3 to three, or continues to stay that way. So now we'll have another knock-in here. This time, though, for Valiente. Here comes Adolfo. Cambiasso with the ball. <laughs> he's going to go ahead, take it off to the left-hand side. Look at this. All the space he's got. He's got Facundo in pursuit. He comes in. He's going to check it down right here as Facundo comes in to put him back in the pocket. He'll leave that ball right there for Criado. Criado comes in. He's going to hit a short shovel pass back to the right for Adolfo. Adolfo now has to be past midfield. He turns this into a positive play, a positive knock-in. Facundo takes off down the field there with Matias torres Zavaleta going to Adolfo. Adolfo dictating the terms of the game right now, continues to work it down the right-hand side. He is going to keep this one to himself. He holds the man out. He's going to let the man bring him back to the ball. Oh, overrides, and now he'll leave it. <laughs> Thanks. Now it's going to be picked up here by an open back shot coming in. Peke down the boards. He hits that shot. Coming back to this ball is going to be Luquitas. Next shot down the back line here. And this one is going to get away from it, it looks like, and be over the back line for another knock in here to be taken by Pilot. Well, getting their opportunities, a few Valiente misses. But again, as we talked about last chucker, Pilot still has not scored. Since the first chucker, and it's been five straight Valiente goals on top of that. So I think we're going to have a quick injury timeout. It looked like Adolfo took a bit of a knock in the corner. They're not sure if, it's, if it was the same shoulder that he took that ball off of in the first chucker. Mm. But poor Adolfo, probably a... Not the most fun few travel days. And then to start this game already, a couple of knocks here in the first half. Well, while we do have an injury timeout here, Cody, i just checking out Facebook Live. Uh, you know, we've got Facebook, not live, but just Facebook. Uh, the game's out, and we've got people commenting. I love to hear where people are tuning or from where people are tuning in. We've got Costa Rica. We've got uh, Houston. Megan says, go here. Uh, Houston here. Go Valiente. We've got Bio, Biodun Aziz watching from Kaduna, Nigeria, the Palermo of Africa. Very cool. Thank you very much, Biodun. I hope I didn't butcher your name too bad. And then, um, yeah, you wouldn't believe all the people, everybody tuning in. One of my favorites here, though, is Anita Evans. She says, always tuned in for Toby Wayman and Cody Offen from Northeastern Oregon. Hashtag Quinn's mom. She's great. You got to love Anita. But getting back to this one, hopefully Adolfo's going to be okay. I love the Valiente come out on their Vespas here <laughs> for their, their medics come out. 
Maybe a little late to the party, but they made it. Hey, they're there, right? Adolfo looks like he's back on his feet. Maybe a little magic spray and hopefully back in the saddle again. Took Scott a pretty, Dale. pretty hard shot. Ball hit him directly in the shoulder again. You know, these balls can travel up over a hundred miles an hour. They're made of hard plastic. It really does not feel nice to get hit with one, Toby. No, oh, man, that is the truth. All right. So, looks like we're going to start this one off just a knock in here. I love everybody tuning in. This is great. I love to see. We've got a, a worldwide audience coming to us right now watching this game here, Cody, from all over the place. Here comes Facundo. He brings the ball back into play. He's going to go ahead and send this one off to the right-hand side where he's going to find Zavaleta at the other end of his pass. Zavaleta gets put in the pocket right now by Lucas. And then Adolfo comes in, lays a hook on him. He's going to get his mallet hooked there for a second, tries to get away from him, but Adolfo steals that ball. And now Adolfo is going to turn the ball back around. Take advantage of this broken play. Look at Peke always going forward to be a target there. Coming in, it's going to be Curtis Pilot looking for the whistle there. Curtis, now Adolfo, and Cambiasso takes it back to the right. Creates some space for himself. He's inside the 60. Here's the shot at the goal from Adolfo. That one gets away from him. So a broken knock-in here for Pilot. They've got to change something up on this set play here because it looked like, I don't know, it just didn't look like Facundo's heart was in it when he hit that pass to Zavaleta. Hit it a little bit too straight. Not enough angle. Kind of was, we're slowing the play down from the get-go, but here we go. Maybe they'll get something going right here. Facundo now going to keep it to himself as Adolfo is there to put Facundo in the pocket. Now he'll leave it for Zavaleta, and he's going to break back to the left. Uh-oh, missed hit right here. Adolfo's going to take advantage of this one. Another broken knock-in right here. Dolfito trying to get this ball back under control with Facundo coming in to put him in the pocket. Here goes Adolfo breaking back to the left. He gets away from Facundo momentarily, flips that ball back there to Peque, or excuse me, to uh, Luquitas. And, well, we get a whistle here. Criado pushing for the foul. A bit of a late whistle, but it, all it depends on when the umpire intended to blow that whistle. Nothing worse than umpiring a game and having the whistle stuck out of your mouth when you want to blow it. <laughs> so you can see here, Criado comes in. And his path to the ball is slightly impeded there. So you said a pilot really having some trouble on those knock-ins. You know, really have. It's critical, but they really need to fix that because you can't make mistakes, especially... In a final like this against this Valiente team, and as you're seeing this Valiente team taking full advantage, another penalty too here, their third one of the game so far. Wow. Fourth penalty two. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. You're right. No, that's I, I take that back. That was the, We had those penalty twos were all in favor of uh, Pilot before. This one here going to be put on through, and look at that. Valiente is going to double up. Uh, pilot on the scoreboard. Wow. And these are all coming off the mallet of Criado so far here today. Yeah, four straight off the mallet of Criado. He has five out of the six. Peque, the lone other goal, and three of those for Luquitas now coming from the penalty two line. All right. Here we go. Ball's put back into play. It's going to be won by Gonzalez, by Peque right here. Peque takes out the off with the ball. Peque, he's got Adolfo behind him. He's going to give that ball back over to Adolfo as Facundo goes in there to put some pressure on Adolfo. Delfito, going to go ahead and hit a deep neck shot back down the boards. He makes it look so easy, but this one gets away from him. We'll have our first possession play of the day given up by Valiente going in favor of Pilot. All right. Sunny Umar's tuning in, too. Here comes... Facundo wasting no time trying to catch Adolfo right there. He's going to leave this ball now for... Zavaleta. Zavaleta keeps it moving forward here as Peke comes in and puts some pressure on him. He's going to take it back to the right as he catches a pick right there from Lucas Escobar. Outside the 60, this is going to be a shot at the goal. Going, going, going. Just wide. Nice try, but I like to see Zavaleta shooting from distance because trying to work it through all those Valiente players just isn't working right now. So they're trying to do something different, and those will start to fall. Well, their best chance in quite a long time, Toby, so they need to, well, whistle will stop the clock here. Quick timeout before the knock-in. But Pilot, they need to change something up right now. Yeah. 
you know, they're kind of hoping to get to the halftime tent, but still two minutes, 23 seconds left to go. So Lots plenty of time, of time here yeah. in chucker number three. No, I think you make a very valid point there, Cody. I think the best thing that could happen to Pilot at this moment would be to get this chucker over with in the books so they can go back, regroup at halftime. Remember, feature game of the week uh, coming you know, from the U.S. Polo SS field number one. So it's going to be a longer than usual halftime, not not just a five-minute halftime, but probably more like a 15-minute halftime. That'll give them a chance to really, you know, take a breath, relax, and then get back into their groove because they started off strong. And then they, they, they've kind of then allowed Valiente to take control of this game. So here comes Adolfo to bring the ball back into play. Second knock in of the chucker. He's going to go ahead and hit one off to the right-hand side. Not a lot of angle on this one again, but he's able to get that ball back over to Priado. Now picked up here by Matias Torres, Zavaleta. Zavaleta takes the ball past midfield. Now he's got Criado staying right there with him as Facundo comes in to help out. Now it's going to be Zavaleta. Oh, my goodness. Loses that play, and Adolfo gets there. Adolfo gets hooked on the play. Zavaleta trying to make the hook on Adolfo and steal the ball at the same time because he knows that it's going to be a Valiente player behind him. If not, here comes Peke. And Peke, well, we get a whistle. Yeah, another whistle there. It happened off the ball, it looks like, Toby. I think you're right. One way or the other, I'm not quite sure who it was blown against. We'll have to take another look at it. I was focused on the ball, saw a bit of a cluster of players. Look sort of to the top right of your screen here. You can see Lucas coming in. I'm not sure if they're going to catch Escobar or Criado for pushing the man into the other player. Yeah, watch but... the right-hand side of the screen here. Right there. Okay. Waiting to find out what the call is going to be here. They, and we haven't got any information in yet from the field, so they're still discussing this play to see who is at fault and who is right and wrong. And hey, hey. could be having a conversation with the third man, depending on how both umpires on the field saw Remember, it. There, we do have the challenge too uh, for both these teams because we're using the full live stream setup here so because of that they do have the ability to challenge but remember the difference is instead of having an instant replay official like we've had in the past they've made the third man the arbiter of the of the challenge so a little bit different there they're going to call this one now as they've made their mind up it looks like it's going to go against criado okay on pushing a player into the right of way and that makes sense too if we watch that one again you could see the 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 Pilot player actually had to pull out of the play, and then the contact was made. Criado was riding him over to to uh, Cri to uh, Escobar. So, watch down at the bottom right of your screen right here. You're gonna see. All right, see here's Escobar, and that yeah, see they're gonna push Facundo right into into. Uh, Lucas. Okay, penalty five from center field going in favor of Pilot. Facundo brings it into play. Facundo's got Adolfo waiting for him. He's going to have Zavaleta come in behind him. He's looking for a place to go. I think he's just going to go ahead and run back to the left and take a shot from outside the 60 right here. He's going to send this one at the goal, and he's going to get it. Look at that. What a goal, Facundo. Boy, they needed that one right now to really stop the bleeding here and get back on the board. Que jugador, que marcador, Facundo Pires. You're absolutely right. He just needed one moment to get the momentum going back in Pilot's direction. Beautiful goal here, Facundo Pires. That Great was one of those approaches drop. that rolls on through, huh? Yeah, and I think he knew he had to get it up over the defender as well. Yeah. Great finish. They're back within two and hoping for one more before the Watch end of the Watch Lucas chunker. right here on the backside. He's going to get this one one right there. Lucas gets out of there with that ball. Escobar turns it back to the inside. Now, Lucas is going to flip it back here to uh, Matias, and he sends it up here for Facundo. Once again, Facundo trying to take this one to the goal. Look at look at uh, Escobar. Oh, my goodness. Tough break there for Facundo. He leaves that ball behind. Picked up now by Adolfo. Adolfo Cambiaso works the ball back to the middle right here. Look at this Peke behind, keeping Facundo away, but Facundo is able to muscle his way through Peke to get back up there to put some pressure on Adolfo. Adolfo takes his shot. And now it's going to be picked up here again by Facundo. He's going to turn it back to the inside, try to run past the defender there. But now here comes the nice pickup by Matias Torres Zavaleta. Zavaleta's got Facundo dropping in behind. He's going to hold this ball. We're down to under 30 seconds left here. 
He's going to drop it back to Adolfo what, or to Facundo. What a great play. Now Facundo is looking for a place to go. He's going to catch a pick from uh, Escobar right there. Now Facundo sucking back to the left, goes to the right, chops this one, puts it back up there to the goal coming in. It's going to be Criado for the defense. Little open back shot. Picked up right here by Matias, and that's a great place to leave the ball to end the half right there. But I would think that he would have liked to, if he was going to be able to, leave the ball on the other side of the field because that would have given his team the offensive side of the throw-in. Nevertheless, that's where it's at. Remember, we have a longer-than-normal halftime. We're going to go to a short break here. We're going to come back. We're going to check out our first half stats, and, do so, and we're going to analyze the game a little bit. And uh, So stay with us. We'll be back for that in just a moment or two.
All right, welcome back everyone to the USPA Polo Network. We're here, it's halftime of the finals of the CV Whitney Cup. Right now, we've got everybody out on the uh, field putting back the divots, the champagne divot stop. And Cody, we've got our first half stats. Let's take a look at these. You can see Pilot, two for six from the field. Valiente has some misses as well, but converting a little bit better. And as for penalty shots, just the, the one miss there from Facundo on the penalty four line. Everything else fairly even, except for those throw-ins. Valiente, 6-3. to three. Bit of a difference maker here so far in this game, Toby. But heading into this second half, Facundo got one more on the board there for yeah. Pilot. Kind of giving them a little bit more momentum. And we were talking about it. They're probably happy to get into the halftime tent, have a little bit of a team talk, maybe change some strategy around because, you know, their knock-ins really weren't very successful, especially there in the third, second and third chucker. Valiente doing a great job of shutting down the pilot offense. Okay, yeah, we, um, you know, I, I always like to say I'd rather go into <coughs> halftime down by a couple than up by a couple because you have a tendency to come out hungry. So hopefully pilot will, will not make a liar of me out of that one. But, um, you know, this is going to be, this is a fun game so far. Right now, it started off with pilot, you know, in the zone, really doing well. They picked up, what, uh, was it two or now three? Their first three goals were all three penalty two. So they got those penalties there. Then um, they were able to clean everything up quite a bit there. In, in the, I should I say, Valiente was able to clean things up a bit. And, and they were able to draw some fouls out of Pilot. Pilot went scoreless in the second chucker. Then they only put one more on the board in the third. And that gives us our 6-4 score. So, uh, you know, at this point... <sighs> I'm, I'm really surprised at the, at the knock-ins that we're seeing right now from Valiente. The fact that Adolfo is hitting that ball kind of straighter than he normally would. But I think that's because he knows every horse that's on the field so well that he knows when Peque or, or Criado is on one that can blow the doors off of, of these, those defenders. He knows every horse that, that Facundo's riding, that Lucas Escobar's riding, that all of them. And he knows what his teammates are doing. The analyzing that he's doing in his mind as he makes his approach is unbelievable how fast that guy's mind works. So everything he does is for a reason, especially on a set play. It's methodical. Now, when we look at Pilot's set plays here, the reason Facundo is not really, hasn't really been, you know, having a whole lot of success there is because Valiente is doing a great job of getting to their men and shutting them down. Uh, right now, you know, they're trying to play this this tit-for-tat game where, where they've got, you know, Facundo will have the ball and then Matias will drop in behind him and then he'll take it and Facundo will break right or left and have to come back around. And they're not, they're not using the field. They're not getting the ball down the field like they need to. And if they keep doing that, I have a feeling that, you know, with as good as these two kids are, Peke and Lucas, um, with a, uh, you know, without even saying anything about Adolfo, but with Peke and Lucas, if you keep doing that, those kids are going to beat you. Eventually, they're going to beat you. And so I really think that, you know, Pilot's going to need to do something different here. They're going to need to start hitting the ball a bit more. They're going to need to hit and run, cover some ground, stretch this team out a little bit. And, and see if that works, you know, because obviously the short game isn't working as well today as it did, say, when they played against uh, Shaq Attack in the semis. You know, we heard Facundo talk about it. You know, when we hit the ball and ran, we weren't doing so good when we slowed it down. Well, that's not the game you want to play against Adolfo, my opinion. You know, maybe I'm wrong, but that's just the way I, I think about it. What do you think, Cody? Absolutely there. And I think part of the issue of playing against Adolfo, no matter how you try to play, he's going to have an answer for that and a strategy for that. So if you try to hit and run, I think it's going to be hard to, you know, it's hard to keep up with those Valiente horses, yep. even when you have some of the best horses in the world, like Pilot does. And then if you try to slow things down, you know, these guys are so good, especially Adolfo on the defense that it's going to be tough to get through them. So right now I think Pilot, they need to just get back to what they were doing early in this game. I think they did catch Valiente asleep slightly in Towards the beginning. The end of the chucker, yeah. But again, or I the think beginning, yeah. perhaps they, you know, they need to get Facundo up here as the ball a little bit more as they did in that Shack attack game, start creating a little more space for him. Easier said than done. But I do look for Facundo again to have a hot start here in the second half. He's coming out on Mega Espia. Mayor will talk a little bit more about her when he comes out but one of my favorite horses from a season ago one of the horses you know he's told us to look out for and i th have a feeling we're going to see pilot come out of the gate strong here it's going to be a, a very close game i think all the way to the end toby but i have a feeling pilot has figured out something here and they're gonna no oh, they will have a big change coming out of the halftime tent well and you know you talk about mega espia coming out here that's that's uh that's kuko garahan uh, is the breeder on on 
uh, of that one there. And he, you know, uh, he puts up videos all the time on social media. I see him quite a bit. But I uh, want to give him a shout out because this is awesome, you know, to have that horse coming out here to start the fourth chucker. This is like, you know, jump starting the game again for for the uh, for the pilot for for both teams, you know, especially you have a long halftime here. So Facundo wants to come out strong. He comes out on Mega Espia, and this horse can do everything. It's the whole package. I mean, Facundo doesn't throw a leg over anything that's bad, but this one is particularly good. So I think you made a good point there. I think you're right. They want to have Facundo with the ball. I'd like to see Facundo get that ball and and run to goal. Put the ball, uh, you know, between the goalposts. Get him, get 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 this team lined out. Spread them out a little bit. But then Lucas Escobar really has to step up. And help out with uh, Matias Torres Zavaleta. Help out, you know, like you said, make some holes up front for Facundo to get through and rely on Zavaleta to be behind Facundo to keep hitting in the ball. Because that, to me, is where I've seen the most success for this team is when they've got um, when they've got Matias Torres behind Facundo, hitting the ball up to him and then covering that back door and letting Facundo take chances because he's so good at taking those chances. I mean, this game is not over by any means. A two-goal difference on the board. And uh, so I, I'm looking for for a pilot to come out strong here as well, just like you said. Okay. Well, we're going to go back to a commercial break right now. Um, let everybody clear off the field. And then we'll be back for the second half of the finals of the 2023 CV Whitney Cup first leg of the Gauntlet Apollo right here on the USP Apollo Network.
Okay, welcome back everyone to the USPA Polo Network. Getting ready to start the second half of this, the finals of the 2023 edition of the CV Whitney Cup. We got a 6-4 score on the board, and what do we have here? Do we have a penalty to end that first half? Well, either way, let's check out our, our, uh, our horse list right now, our fourth chucker horse list. Well, we talked about Mega Espia already for Facundo Pires. Xenophobia. Curtis Pilot coming out on India. Lucas on Protohito. SB Xenophobia for Matias Torres Avalado. That's another very good horse. And on the flip side, keep an eye on Adolfo, of course. Dolphina Hal. And I really like this one of Criado's Machitos Rococo. A nine-year-old Argentine bay, more, bay mare from Machitos Holiday by Rosa. It's owned by Lucas Criado, of course, bred by Los Mochitos. All right. Back shot out of here. Fourth uh, Adolfo. Now, that ball gets picked up, turned back around here by Matias Torres. He's going to hit it right here. Hits that one into the horse's hoof, and it's going to be taken now by Adolfito. He runs the ball back around. Adolfo takes it back. He gets away from Matias here momentarily, but the ball up gets up, uh, settles against the boards. Facundo comes in. Now Matias is there playing off him. He's going to get a pick right there. Adolfo catches a pick from Criado momentarily. Now it's going to be Adol uh, Facundo to drop back in here to put some pressure on Adolfo. He releases the ball. Here comes Lucas Escobar. Near side tail shot. Picked up again here by Facundo. Just the guy you want to have the ball if you're a pilot fan. He's going to turn this one back around. He's got Zavaleta coming in behind him. He's going to go ahead, take the hit from Adolfo. He'll leave that ball right there for Zavaleta. Zavaleta sends it back to the left-hand side. This is what I'm looking for right here. Here comes Facundo. Picks up the pass. He's going to shut down. He's going to shoot at goal. No, he's going to hit a short pass back. All right, a shot back over to the right now. He's going to shoot at the goal right here. His shot will go. Oh, man. Might have even kissed the post and goes wide. So we'll have a knock-in now for Valiente. Tough luck right there. Pilot really wanted that goal. And you mentioned, too, both these teams' knock-ins haven't been fantastic yet today, but Valiente may be having a little more success, and I bet you like the angle of that shot a there little bit better. There we go. Yeah, finally. Yeah, exactly. It'll be picked up here by Lucas Criado Jr. Luquitas. Oh, stolen by Facundo. They gave that ball right to him. What a play. What a read by Facundo. He's going to go ahead and try to take this broken knock-in and fix it, and he's going to try to make a goal right here on this play. Goes to run past the goal. Here comes the reverse near side next shot at the goal. No way! What a save right there. Smart play by Criado. That's a guaranteed goal. Unbelievable shot from Facundo. And it's saved. And it turns into a penalty number six here. Safety, or corner, however you want to say it. But it was going to be a guaranteed goal. Now he's uh, Lucas is going to make him do it the hard way here from the 60-yard line. Near side neck shot. Unbelievable. He was able to get this shot off. Here's one more look at it. Wow. Just incredible, and saving a goal, giving up the safety, you'll take that every time. Every time. Penalty number six. Facundo's teeing it up. Look at this beautiful mare. Very, very gorgeous horse, and absolutely flies, can stop on a dime turn, like you said, the total package. Okay. <laughs> I think it might have been the Gold Cup final. Facundo, I thought this mare should have won Best Playing Pony. It was another one of his Last horses year. that won Best yeah. Playing Pony. So tough to complain about that if you're Facundo. And he drains it, and here we go. Pilot starting their second half comeback here early in the fourth chucker. Not that early, I guess. We're already about two minutes in. But nevertheless, here it is. We're a one-goal ball game now. 6-5 the score. Facundo picks up his fifth goal of the game. And he banged that one off the scoreboard as well. I didn't want to say anything before the right. shot, but I had a feeling after missing that last penalty four, he had a little bit of redeeming to do there. Yeah, here comes Adolfo to win this throw in right here. There he goes. Adolfo takes off running right now. He's going to go ahead and keep this one to himself as Lucas comes in. He forced a whistle right there. He's not happy about something. I mean, obviously he's not happy about... Lucas over riding over the top of the ball, but nevertheless, I by him not swinging at the ball the second time, he, he basically forced the umpires to blow the whistle right here. Yeah, take a look at the replay. Adolfo coming in, Escobar comes across the front end. It's yeah, a little more apparent when you yeah, look at really it was. from that angle. Escobar just slips across the front end. 
of Adolfo. So they're likely going down to a goal shot penalty. Kind of an and, unforced error here, isn't it? Yeah, likely another penalty too, where Lukitas Criado has been perfect so far. Three for three on the day. I like the way that the umpires have been have been blowing their ball placement, shall I say, the, these these uh, these kind of fouls. Because I'm like you. I think they're probably going to call a penalty two here. Yeah. Yeah, well, I may have spoken uh -oh. about it. I thought they were going down to a penalty. Wait a second. They're going to get an. Uh, they're going to get a, a, a yellow uh -oh. card here against Escobar. That's his second. He's down for two minutes. I don't know. I mean, yeah. All right. So with the yellow card, that means that if they miss this penalty, they'll get another shot at it. If they make it, they'll come back uh, for a penalty five at center field. That's a. Mm. Yeah, that one hurts big time for yeah. Pilot. You can see Captain Facundo Perez having a discussion with the umpires asking, you know, why they had to be so harsh on the poor kid. But, you know, two yellow cards, like you said, that's a two-minute penalty in the penalty box. So that's going to be really tough for for Pilot right now. They could they could go, you know, this could be this could really hurt a lot because not only are they going to be three against four now, but then they're all you know they're going to get a re-hit here if they miss it, if they make it, um, which is totally possible because yesterday, the, in the Iconica game, Valiente, or excuse me, Iconica, these two kids here missed like three open goal penalties right off the bat. All right, here's the goal. It's straight on through. Send a special shout-out to my friend Petey Von Gontard there. He's up watching the game out in St. Louis, I think is what he says. But we come back now for a penalty five. So we got a two-goal ball game. This is a potential two-goal swing right here. Let's see if they can uh, you know, make this that two-goal swing. You know, you get the penalty two, then back to the center for a penalty five. Now, Peke took that penalty, that last penalty, too, there. That's interesting because they have been having Lucas take them. Yeah, Peke had only taken one penalty, two before that. And maybe Criado just changing horses or on a, one that he's not very comfortable shooting his penalties on. That's true. All right, here comes Adolfito. Hits this one down the center. Going to be picked up right here by Lucas Criado. Oh, Facundo got a piece of that one there. Now Peke comes in. He's got the right of way as Matias Torres puts him in the pocket. Now Adolfo will pick up that ball. He takes it back to the left, trying to find a place to go, trying to find some space to move right here. Here comes the open back shot. Oh, and now it's Peke here to beat uh, Facundo on the play. Peke with a quick tail shot there. Facundo read it perfectly. He comes back over. Oop. Bob up on the handlebars there for a second. Now he's back. He's good. Facundo keeps it away from Criado. Now he takes off, <clears throat> excuse me, back down the field right here. He's got two 16 goals between him and the goal right now. He gets away from the first 10-goal player. He's got to get past Peke. Now he's going to go ahead and try to rely on horsepower here to get away from Peke Gonzalez. Peke, though, able to get the leg and win the ride off. Now, Peke, open back shot down the boards, but picked up again by Facundo. Facundo's going to go ahead and take this one to the goal. He's looking good. He's going to score right here. I can feel it. He's in the red zone. Look at this. Facundo runs it on through, picks up the point, and wow. Incredible. There we go. That's what I was talking about. Facundo has to take the ball in his own hands and take control here. And so it was could have been a two-goal swing the other way. Now turns into a, a one-goal ball game here. What a play from Facundo Pires hitting that ball out of the air multiple times, intercepting that back shot from Peke. Tough luck, Peke's back shot. That ball was up against the boards. He couldn't get a full mallet on it. Facundo makes him pay, taking that one in for the score and keeping Pilot right in this contest. All right, Facundo wins the throw and takes off running once again. Look at this. They're shorthanded, and he's going to tie the game up right here, or try to. Now, Matias lays the pick for him, but it's going to be Criado to come back in and put the pressure on Facundo. Facundo gets away from Criado. Look at this. Here he goes. Facundo Pierce showing why he is still one of the top best players in the world. Blows the doors off of everybody. He's in the zone right here. He shoots. Oh, no. It gets away from him. Oh, man. What a nice try for Facundo. What a horse. Just afterburners on that thing. Knock and coming for Valiente. Just blew right by the defender there. Cut shot at the goal. Overcut it, Toby. That's even harder to do, to do from that spot than score the goal. Big sigh of relief here for the Valiente yeah. players. I guess he is, he is human after all. All right, here comes the pass over to Criado. Now Lucas is ba Escobar's back on the field now. 
after serving his two-minute suspension. Facundo goes in there, lights up. Criado, again, he lights him up. The horse kicks that ball, and it's going to be put over the boards right here. I believe off the mallet. The, okay, yeah, they're indicating this is going to be a possession play in favor of Valiente. 7-6 the score. Adolfo will bring the ball back into play. It's quite hot today, too, by the way. It's hotter than it's been. Actually, the past couple days have been getting up there in temperature-wise. It's been a bit of a record week heat-wise. And, the, yeah, you're right. The last couple days have been the hottest. Probably, probably today. I think zero breeze. Yeah. Might be getting some rain soon, you'd hope. Uh, let's hope so. Here comes Lucas. He digs the ball off the boards, takes it further over there. Where's he going with it here? Now, he hits this one. It's going to be Criado to hit this one back in the goal. Look at this shot. That one's going to go, too, if they don't get there. Here comes the save right there by Matias torres Evaletta. Can he get to it in time? Yes, he does. He gets that ball, keeps it on the field right here. I thought he did anyway. Maybe not. Maybe. All right, they're calling safety right here. Well, Criado was appealing as... We'll see if we can see it. Yeah, as if the ball went over the line. Matias torres Evaletta. Looks like he was still hustling. Yeah, playing to the whistle. You don't see much of an argument from him, though, after the fact. Let's take a look here. Grado actually makes a very smart play. He checks up knowing he's not going to get back to that ball and that Zavaleta is going to get there in time, puts himself in a good spot. <sighs> That's such a tough side. I can't really tell, but yeah, it looks from, like it's on the line. From that angle, it looked like it's indeed on the line still. Remember, you have to be able to see daylight between the ball and the backside of the line for it to either be a goal or a... Uh, or, or considered, over, uh, you know, out of play. Facundo still arguing the case that it was on the line. Maybe yeah. we get something better from the drone here. It can be tough to see. Maybe we can slow things down. Take a look. Like Remember, got to see that daylight. Oh, just totally cover. I don't know if I saw the ball pass the line or not. I couldn't tell. Yeah, maybe getting a little lucky here, Valiente, with the penalty call. Not sure either what the... Goal judge, the flagger called on the play. Obviously, they are just an aid for the two mounted officials who can overrule the goal judge or a flagger's calls. That's a nice T right there. Penalty six is going to be declared the ruling on the field. Okay. Hey, Hunter. Kuko Escapate, too. Hunter Latham tuning in. All right, here comes Dolfito. Dolfito, it's up. It is good. It's a goal. He gives his team that two-goal lead back on the board. 8-6 the score. Adolfo Cambiasso. There might have been a partial little deflection there, but not enough to stop it. In for the score. And Adolfo Cambiasso. Picking up his first goal of the day here, Toby. Yeah. And, you know, something we talked about. It's nice for him. It's a bit of a luxury. He doesn't have to do much of the work. Well, I shouldn't put it that way. Yeah. The scoring the work. The scores. Yeah, when exactly. he's got Peque Gonzalez and Luquitas Criado in front of him. All right. Ball's in play. It's going to be one right here by Matias Torres Zavaleta. Zavaleta. Bob comes in to put Zavaleta in the pocket. The horse kicks the ball forward again. Now Zavaleta from a standstill right here. He's going to go ahead and break away from... The first man, now there's the 30-second bell. has just sounded. Matias is going to leave that ball for Facundo. He's going to go ahead and run with it right here. Facundo takes off. He gets some good protection from his teammates. He's trying to get away from Peke and Adolfo once again. Now he'll leave that ball there. Here comes Matias. Open back shot, and Adolfo's on a breakaway run. Back to that north end of the field, looking to give his team a three-goal lead before the end of the fourth. Chucker right here. But here comes Matias Torres to take it with him forward on the near side. Zavaleta with a tail shot down the boards right here. Where's Lucas Escobar? He's covered up. Now he's going to get there. And that's going to be Chucker. Wow, what a good, what a fun Chucker that was, too. They tie this one, actually. Two goals apiece here in the fourth. So we're going to go ahead and uh, go to a quick break. And we'll come back to continue this, the finals of the 2023 edition of the CV Whitney Cup.
Welcome back, everyone, to USPA Polo Network. Getting ready to start the fifth chucker play, which means we have 15 minutes left in regulation time. And here we go. We got our teams coming back out right now, Cody. Yeah, take a look at the pilot squad riding out here. We've got Facundo Pires. He's going to be coming out on open Azarenka, actually, here to is. start the fifth chucker. Often saves her for the last chucker, but... Might need a little extra help here in the fifth. Absolutely, and not a bad time. Down two goals right now, bringing out open Azarenka, another one of Facundo's best. He's got about six or seven of his best, I'd say, Toby. <laughs> and Yeah. Well, you know, he was telling me, I was asking him about this. Azarenka is one of the ones that stayed. You know, uh, there's a goalie, uh, was it Lovelocks? Uh, was one he, he doesn't have this year. He sent a couple to England. He brought some over from England. But this horse in particular, Azarenka, I believe did win. I think this is – Azarenka was the one that won Best, Best Pony Gold Pony. Cup, right? Yeah. This horse is unbelievable. And now is the time you want him to have the ball. Okay, here we go. Ball's in play. Starting chucker number five. Here comes Matias Torres. Zavaletti gets hooked by Adolfo. The horse kicks the ball forward, and it's going to be picked up again by Lucas Criado. Luquitas hits a short pass back over to – Dolfo on the left-hand side. Cambiasso drops the boards right here. Comes back to the ball. Dolfito takes back off. Right here, he's got Facundo coming in to put some pressure on him. He hits this one back over there. Look at this perfect pass right here for... That was unbelievable, that pass. And you know what? Here's something else, folks, I'm going to tell you right now. They did tell me. I asked the powers that be, and they said they're going to do it. I'm going to, We're going to get a telestrator in here later on in the season. So that's going to be really cool because then I'll be able to draw on the screen because I want to show, I would love to be able to illustrate to you visually how amazing this shot was from Adolfo right here. He hits this ball so perfectly. He hits it just far enough so that Pekka can get established on the right of way and short enough so that Lucas can't get a piece of it and actually Pekka can draw the whistle. That was done. That, that whistle was there because Adolfo hit literally a perfect shot within about a three-inch square of where he needed to put it. Yeah, and you'll see here, Lucas maybe would get away with it on that first attempt, but he has to swing a second time, reaching back, and that's going to get called every time. Penalty number two here for Luquitas Criado. Is he on I? Is this I here? Is this Lapis? Yeah, you're right, Toby. That is Lock Ahi. That's what I thought. There's my horse, Ahi. This horse can mortally fly right here, folks. I'm telling you unreal this horse has got is is another one that's just this is one of my favorite horses from last season absolutely it's one of the horses we kind of started noticing at first from Lukitas, and then since he's brought a few of ahi's uh, siblings into the yep. mix as well and just yeah, for the summer yeah another unbelievable breeding operation there that Lukitas and his father lucas have started there you go now back shot here from peke Picked up there by Lucas. Takes a couple swings at it. Now it's going to be Peckett getting hooked there. Oh, he gets all tangled up with his with boss man, with Hefe. Now Lucas Escobar takes it back to the right of those defenders. Adolfo reaching up to make a hook. He doesn't actually make the hook, but here comes the pickup now by Zavaleta. Zavaleta works it back around. Now he gives that ball back over. Nope, he's going to keep it to him. Well done. What a play. Zavaleta now waiting for Facundo. And we'll get a whistle right there. Looks like they're going to catch Criado on this one, I would imagine. Yeah, it was a quick whistle. I don't know if they saw that coming or if something else happened, but it did look like Criado was kind of reaching across. Yeah, it's reaching. Facundo there. He made a great play, good effort, just reaching down too soon. Watch, he's going to time this play with Facundo here. Watch him get turned then come back into the man. He's pushing, pushing. He has the leg on Facundo, but Facundo still has... The angle, open as Aranka, not giving up any ground here. Take another look at it. Okay. Wow, we got people tuning in from Australia, from Los Blancos del Polo in Argentina. Penalty number three coming up in favor of Pilot, giving them a chance to bring their team back within two here. I know a couple of our regular viewers from out western Canada, from the Okanagan Polo yeah. Club. Alex Wales and his son, Marty Wales, are actually in the stadium right oh, now, in attendance, watching the right. game live. So they've got to come down and check out all the facilities down here. Very so cool. I know they'd normally be writing into you at, yeah. right now, but they're at the game. And a converted penalty 
keeping this one close, Toby. I have a funny feeling it's going to end in a one or two goal contest here because Facundo Pires and this pilot team, they're just not giving up here and really putting on a good second half performance so far. Matias Torres is going to win this throw in. Right here with a tail shot there for Facundo, but what a read by Peke. He saw that one coming. Yep. Open back shot here from Peke. His shot's going to be picked up again by Matias Torres. Zavaleta turns that ball back to the inside. Now Zavaleta goes back to the right, and he's going to go ahead and take off right here. Thinks about go well done. Lucas lays a bump for him. Now he's going to try to get away. He's going to go ahead and send this one forward. Escobar's going to take his man. Lucas is going to get there. He's going to score right here. Lucas Escobar picks up his first goal of the game. First goal that does not come off the mallet of Facundo Pires for the pilot team. We're back to a one-goal ball game now. 9-8 the score. Might have to call that the Amazon Prime delivery of the day. Look at this <laughs> pass from Zavaleta. He sees Lucas going forward, has the man taken out, slides that in between two blue jerseys. Perfect assist. And Lucas Escobar, that's going to be his first of the day. Well, Marty just wrote in. He says, watching live and still listening to you guys. Great as always. Thanks, Marty. Appreciate it. 9-8 <laughs> the score now. Yeah, we've got a. Here we go. This throw is going to be won by Facundo right here. Facundo takes that ball, takes the hit. Now Facundo keeps it away from Adolfo. Facundo is going to go ahead and hit near side. Open back shot, keeping that ball away from the 10-goal player. He hits it down there looking for one of his offensive players, but it's picked up here and turned back now by Luquitas Criado. Comes back around. Criado takes off back to the right, keeps this one to himself. As Adolfo drops in behind, Facundo is going to stay with Adolfo. And he'll take the ball right here. Facundo digs that ball off the board, tries to anyway. Now Facundo, now Adolfo does, forcing Facundo to get out of the way. Here comes the shot from Adolfo. Hits a pass. Oh, nice try right there. Oh, no. Well done. What a play here, Peke. Coming in. Nicely done by Lucas Escobar. Well done, Lucas. That's the way. Another open back shot here for Escobar. Makes the neutral play right here, but oh, no way. Look at this. Everything's starting to come to... I take that back. I was going to say everything's starting to come together here for Pilot until that. Now, it's going to be Facundo to hit it off to the right-hand side. This one comes up short. Adolfo's going to win this. Oh, well done. What a play right there by Matias Torres. He just hits it right back to Facundo. Let's Facundo have space to the right, to the left right here. He checks down. He gets past midfield. He'll drop it back to... Zavaleta. Zavaleta is going to now be put in the pocket by Criado. He's going to go ahead and blow past Criado right here. He's going to take it back. He's around the 60-yard line. Right down the middle. Goes again. Takes another tap. Ooh, somebody's going to be wrong here. We're going to let the Empire sort out who it is. Yeah, we'll wait for the official word. From first glance there, it looked like, to me, Peke thought Zavaleta was going to go one more tap to the right to give himself a better angle. And I think he may have realized that and went back behind Peke a bit here. Yeah, did yeah? Are they going to say? Did he, is he manufacturing? They're changing the line right here. You know, right uh, there. I, I think. I don't know. I think it's. Wow. Yeah. Again, we'll we'll wait and see. But you know what I'm saying here. Yeah, I, I hear think, you. I know. You, you know, mean. Peke is expecting him to go further to the right to try to get a better angle, not shoot through the players. And Matias Torres just keeps see, her going straight. From that angle here, I thought, ooh, changing the line. But then we we saw the second angle. I, I think it might be drone. It did look like like uh, Peke came across the right of way. You know, maybe anticipating that next shot to goal to try to block it. Sure. But either way here, again, the umpires on the field aren't privy to our replays unless they're going to the third man here. But here's another look at it. Don't get a good angle. Yeah, a little here. tough here with some horses in the way. But, yeah, even from there, it sort of looks like he's about to tap it further out to the right-hand side and then just goes straight towards the goal. You know, umpires, they work really hard on, on – uh, on getting things right and 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 i like i said before i think they've been doing a great job so far this year on their ball placements especially because in the past you know it seems like you know there'd be like say if it was a play that happened that would be like a a penalty four well they're already you know not moving it up but they're just going ahead they're already making those force threes and threes twos and i think it's great it, it really does I, i'm a big believer that if the umpires you know make it hurt enough the players will start but will stop fouling as much i mean sometimes it's unavoidable but that's a bit better. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, they're still waiting to find out right here. I'm not sure. We've got an umpire timeout. 
is what the play is right here. Let's see what we can see from this one. Yeah, you can see that ball that's, actually goes up over Peke's horse's neck. There. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think that's going to be... Peke Gonzalez waiting for the official word as well here. We should say, tell yeah. everybody, stick around after the chucker. We have a little yeah. sneak peek at one of Peke's top horses, Carpaccio. Yep. And he's played very well this over the This is the, the best years. angle right here. Yeah, you can see here's the shot. And so then he goes there. And yeah, to me, yeah, that's to me, that's a foul on Peke. That's the best angle we got right there was from the drone. So maybe an umpire needing to change horses here. That's my best guess for the umpire timeout. Hopefully not a jockey muscle or anything. Yeah. Okay, so they're going to blow this one against. They're going to go the other way with it here. They're going to go against Pilot. Which was my first instinct was that it was against Pilot. But then, like I said, that second look that we got from the drone, I changed my mind. And I think it, I think it was... Um, Peke that actually came across the right of way. So I can understand. But like I said, I, I, I don't blame them for that. They're calling changing the line. That was my first instinct that it was changing the line. But then when we look at the drone angle, I think it's the other way around. I'm going to be curious after this when these guys, because they go back, the umpires, they're, they go back. They want to get better. They're going to go back, and they're going to watch this video again over and over again. I'm going to have to find out, make a note right now when they go back and listen to it. Uh, I want Lucero and Huddleston to, to call me after the fact and tell me if they think they got this one right or, or wrong. Here comes, not saying anything bad, because like I said, I think it was a, I think with the information they had, they made a good call, but with our drone angle, makes a bit of a difference to me. Here comes Facundo. He's going to go ahead and try to get away from Adolfo right there. He gets it done. Now he breaks past the man. Look at this. He takes the, what a shot on the near side. Here comes Peke to take it with him. He's going to cut that ball back across the field right now. Peke Gonzalez chucking down now around two and a half minutes left to go here in the fifth. He's going to continue to send the ball back to the far side. Coming in, here's Lucas Escobar. Open back shot to Peke, or to Facundo. Facundo's got it. Ooh. That could have been a little interesting there. Now it's going to be a nice play here by Matias Torres, feeling that player coming up behind him. Lucas comes in to lay a pick for him. Now he's going to go ahead and let Facundo have this one. He'll take it back to the left. Now here's the hook of the back shot. Horse kicks that ball forward, and Lucas Escobar is going to pick it up right here. Escobar goes to the inside. He's going to take it back to the right. He gets away from – no, he doesn't. He didn't get away from anybody. That's a great back shot there from Esca, from uh, Lucas Criado. Nice play there by Zavaleta taking out Adolfo, letting Facundo turn the ball back to the inside. Facundo still, they're knocking on the door, trying to get this one put in between the posts. Now, Adolfo doesn't want to foul, so then it's going to be Facundo right here. Keeps that one away from those defenders. Here comes the back shot at the goal. It stopped right there. Adolfo jumps back on it. And Facundo with the steal right here. Facundo's got it. No way. Look at this. What a goal. And we've got a tie ball game. In oh, wait a second now. Yeah, there might have been a whistle on the play, Toby. Not to take any steam away from you here. They are oh. running back to center. Oh, I thought I heard a whistle at first, and then Facundo's reaction right now. Unless they're, yeah, they're going down to midfield for Adolfo, I think. So I think so. Take a look. So he clears it. Yeah, I think they had to give Adolfo one more play so on too. the ball, yep. especially after that replay. That was my initial reaction. So I did too, but yeah, I was like, I well, there's no foul. There's yeah, no whistle take yet. Take the goal off the board, I believe. The flagger got pretty excited with us as well. <laughs> yeah. So penalty five from midfield, it looks like here for Valiente. Oh, that hurts. Definitely hurts. It was a great play by Facuna, but we see the replay there. It's a, the correct call. They yep. had to give Adolfo one more play on the ball because the – First player there was in a fouling position. He cleared out. And That's Facundo exactly made. right. They blew this one against Lucas. Uh, yeah. So, unfortunately, you know, I, I don't really blame Facundo for taking that, that play or making that play right there. I mean, he's got to take some chances. They're, they're getting beat right now. You know, time's becoming a factor. We're here in the fifth chuck or so. You never know. If you get lucky on that one, you get pick up a goal, you got a tie ball game. If not, yeah, you give up 150 yards. But nevertheless, uh, I'm still not. I still totally don't think that's a, a really bad play on Facundo's part. Yeah, so Adolfo is off the field right now changing horses. So I don't yeah. know if we have – we might just have an all-made change timeout. I was wondering if maybe there was a challenge on the play, but I don't think Facundo has elected to use that challenge. No, he'll save it. 120 left to go here.
<laughs> Neil Agate says, Toby trying to send a photo of the 20 plus watching at uh, Bassett's in Polosville, Maryland. That's really cool. Well, thanks so much. I appreciate you sending the, uh, the message anyway. Knowing there's 20 of you guys watching, tuning in. That's great. Love to hear that. I know there's watch parties all over the place. I know there's watch parties up in Bighorn, Wyoming right now. My sister's got a group there at the last chance. And then I know in Aiken, you know, Todd Martin and those guys are always watching too. Here we go. It's going to be Adolfo to bring the ball into play off the penalty number five. Facundo is going to try to stay with him right here. Adolfo is going to be able to get away from Facundo momentarily here. He's going to run this one back from left to right. Now out in front, he pulls away from the man. He takes it back to the inside, drops it there for Criado. And now it's going to be picked up again by Peke. Peke turns that ball back around. Lucas wants to poach, unable to do so. Peke fires at the goal. Nice stop right here from Matias Torres Zavaleta. Mati gets challenged, keeps it to himself right here. He's going to go ahead and break with that ball. Makes a run back to the right-hand side. Adolfo takes him out, wins the right off, hits that near side back shot. Now, Facundo jumps back on it right here. Facundo takes off across the goal. Facundo checks down now as he's got... Lucas coming in to put him in the pocket. He's going to go ahead and break back to the right. We're down to 30 seconds to go here. In the fifth, Chucker. Adolfo Facundo still with that ball. He's going to flip it back right here. Come back to it on his offside. Now Adolfo tries to get there. Facundo lost his mallet on the play. Oh, Matias gets there. Matias has got to do this one without a mallet for Facundo. Curtis comes in. Now Matias. Oh, yeah. They're going to catch Adolfo right here. That's going to end the Chucker. Looked to me like he was 90 degrees. We'll find out, though. After this, right now, we've got a 9-8 score on the board. We'll take a look at the replay here one more time. Yeah, here's that play before. Facundo thinks he gets fouled here. He's going to lose his mallet. No, this is... Yeah, right here. You're right. Yeah, right. he gets a mallet jerked out of his hand. Yeah, he thinks he's fouled with Peke coming straight across. And then eventually here, you'll see Adolfo Cambiasso. He's waiting and waiting. Changes the line slightly there, but then Zavaleta changes it once again. Leaves it for Facundo and Adolfo. He's going to come across the line. Either way, they're going to give us a call after this chucker break. Yeah, let's check out this uh, Carpaccio video real quick, and we'll be back for the final chucker regulation time here on the USPA Polo Network. Machitos Alcaparra and Dolfina Cuarteto. He's uh, eight years old. He came last year to, to play the gauntlet here thanks to the USPA that helped me with a grant to bring him a, to play the gauntlet with a false stamp. There was one, I scored a goal in the final. Uh, I, was, I was really happy about it. And then in the same ice, I, against Park Place, I had a ball and I hit a back turn and I turned to my own back turn and then he got a foul and I think that was, that was nice for him. Ever gone with a polo champion? Right now, but in order to do that, they gotta get past going right here. Now it's gonna be a near fall. Oh, look at that shot. That was so awesome by Pecky. Okay, welcome back everyone to the USPA Polo Network, getting ready to start the last chuck of regulation time with a one goal ball game. I'm gonna have to do it, Cody. I'm gonna put you in the hot seat. Yay or nay OT. No overtime today here, Toby. Both of these teams so good. One of them's gonna get it done. Okay. Good look at Peke Gonzalez waiting to get on Carpaccio here. Maybe giving these guys a little extra minute because of the heat in between chuckers, of course. The game of the week, game of the tournament here, the finals on U.S. Polo ASSN, field number one at the National Polo Center. And that's Palon Sterling just adding to the coaches that this Valiente team has. Is that not? Yeah, it is. Yep, it is. So you've got, I mean, if necessary, well, there is yeah, Lucas, about, Lucas Criado Sr. There's about Mariano 400 Gonzalez, goals right there. That's Luke, it, yeah. <laughs> Paylon <roughly>. Sterling. <laughs> not, not to mention your captain, Adolfo Cambiasso. I have a feeling Peroto, excuse me, is probably down there as well, Toby. And here you can see a little information on this Carpaccio Mare gelding, excuse me, unbelievable horse. And one of those horses... Peke almost seems to play a goal better on when he's on this horse. So, and he's had him for a long time too. He has. He's had him. He's been playing high goal for in the, on this horse for a few years now. And if you 
think back to that little interview that we showed early in the game with Facundo Pires. He talks about Peque Gonzalez and how well he's playing, especially off of six goals. So, you know, you could argue Peque may be a little underrated. Then you add him to Adolfo Cambiasso's team. That probably gives him another goal or two. And now he's on his favorite horse. So look out yeah. for a little eight, nine goal Peque Gonzalez performance here in trucker number six. All right. Yeah. Well, that's, a, I mean, yeah, I think I, I agree with you on everything you just said there. Coming out now. Let's check out our, our, our six trucker horse list. And in the meantime, hey, Bob says watching from snowy Southern California, enjoying the broadcast. Great commentary, great finals. Thanks, Bob. We appreciate you tuning in. You yep. too, Michelle Vogel. We'll see a few good ones here. Facundo, we're not sure exactly who he's going to jump on here. Obviously, he has a few. One of his good ones, uh, um, open Beyonce, he had as a spare here in this horse. So we might see Beyonce back. We. You know, could even see perhaps Twitter back in this chucker. We'll have That's to wait and find out. Too, yeah. So it looks like we're going to have a penalty in favor of Pilot. Penalty for 60-yard attempt to start. Chucker number six. Great opportunity here for Facundo and this Pilot team to get the game tied up right at the start of the chucker. Okay. Penalty number four. For the time, I mean, like, yeah, this, I, I, I can feel it. it. This whole game has been building to this chucker right now. You know, they start off, Pilot starts off strong. They go up. They, they win the first chucker three to two. Then Valiente comes back and just, and keeps chipping away, chipping away. And now they've been up the rest of the game. And now I have a feeling Pilot's going to turn it on right here. And Facundo's going to make some magic happen for us. Here comes the shot from Facundo. Oh, I could tell that was mishit. And he's going to be picked up now by... Peke. Peke is going to be challenged by Facundo. And now Adolfo comes in. Oh, Peke gets back to it right here. He gets hit by Facundo. And now here comes the pass back up there for Peke Gonzalez as Adolfo hits that ball back up to him. Now Peke Gonzalez gets a pass here from Luquitas. Here is Facundo to take it forward with him. Facundo now checking down as he gets to the 60-yard line. He's going to go ahead and continue to go left. Ball didn't go exactly where he wanted to put it. He's going to wait for Pekka to commit, and then he'll adjust his game accordingly here. He's going to let Pekka hit him, then he'll take back off to the right. Goes to run away from Lukitas. Lucas comes in to put him in the pocket. Now, Lucas has to get out of his way. Facundo wants a whistle right there. Doesn't find it, though. He'll take off running once again right here. He goes back to the end. Whoa! Que pasto. Oh, a bit of a collision there, Toby. <laughs> <laughs> Making the Making the crowd go wild as well. So a tough collision there. I mean, it looked like Lukitas just lined him up right there. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so Facundo jumped down. Go He's going to yeah, take a second there. He definitely took a lick. Let's take another look here. Got a good look from the drone as well. Facundo coming around the corner. Yeah, and, you know, you... Luke, I don't know even if it was that on purpose. Horse kind of just took a weird step as well, but he goes sort of right to left, I think, into Facundo versus, you know, Facundo changing the line too quickly without no, yeah, Lucas clearing. So I think your initial, I think your initial uh, reaction there, Toby, might be right. But again, we're going to wait and find out what the umpires on the field decide here. Yeah, they're going to call this one against Lucas anyway. I know that for sure. But you know, with the yellows that they've given to to Escobar today. I think this one would warrant, could, well, I shouldn't say would, should, could war a warrant a yellow Def card too. Definitely could. Definitely could warrant a yellow card. Depending on the severity of it, you could even see a double yellow. Not mm -hmm. that I'm suggesting that, Toby. Yeah, that might I'm be a little just, much for this situation. I'm but... just saying it's a, you well, know, I mean, a possibility. A possibility, yeah, sure. All things are possible. Definitely. Uneven ride off. Yeah, it's going to be uneven ride off. No yellow card, or I don't know. We're waiting to find out here because I would think. Yeah. We well, you think about the second one they gave to to Lucas, where with with Adolfo, when Lucas didn't even make contact, right? Kind of came from left to right across, you know. So I would think that by going by that metric, there you you would think that they would give Lucas one here. Okay. Well. When we find out what the case is going to be, we will relate. We'll relay that uh, information to you, our viewers at home. By the way, I'm so happy to have so many people tuned in. Thanks for tuning in with us. So happy to be back on the live stream. Get it going once again here for the finals of the CV Whitney Cup. 
And, um, yeah, Cody, it's, it's good to be sitting next to you again, my friend. I tell you what. Oh, it feels amazing, Toby. And as we take a look at the field, the umpires having a discussion, wondering if we're going to see a yellow card or not. Yeah. 6.39 left to go. Yeah, a lot of time here. So regardless of the outcome of this play, anything can really happen. There's the yellow. So the yellow has been issued. Penalty four to pilot. So Criado now. Another That's yellow would send him off for two minutes. To be a little extra cautious for the remainder of this game. Okay. And as you said, I think it's an appropriate yellow card from what we've seen so far today. So the umpire staying consistent here. Yeah, I mean, if 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 the second yellow that they gave to Lucas Escobar it is deserved, where he doesn't make contact with Adolfo but comes at that same similar angle, then I don't know how you can not give one to to Lucas when he makes contact with Facundo and hurt, and hit him hard enough that Facundo had to step off too. So I understand what you were saying by maybe a double. Would be appropriate there. I can see what you're saying, you know, with the injury possibly. But I don't know. That's a, that's getting a little bit too out of my wheelhouse, I think, where I feel comfortable making a prediction on something like that. But, yes, definitely the one yellow I think is definitely warranted here. And I think the ball placement is good. You know, you take it down from what they were inside the 60-yard line on the south end. They go all the way back to the 60-yard line on the north end. So probably a good, good ball placement here. So Facundo coming off of a missed penalty four. The last time he missed one, he ended up draining a penalty six shortly thereafter. That's so. right. Looking for a nice tee. He's not too worried about giving up an extra yard here. Yeah. Okay, here we go. One thing about it, when the game's on the line, winners want the ball. And we know Facundo is a winner. Okay, here he comes. Facundo, it is up and it is good. Undefendable and we have a tie ball game on the scoreboard now, Cody. This is fantastic. Just what I was hoping to see. Eight goals on the day for Facundo, 36 total goals here in the C.V. Whitney Cup. And you just had a feeling he was going to drain that one, didn't you, Toby? Totally, yeah. I mean, when it's time, you know, when he's got to do it, he comes through. Facundo, he's going to win this throw-in right now, too. Watch this. Here he goes. Facundo out the back door. He's got it. And he's gone now with the ball, but he gets taken out here by Peke. Peke with a strong tail shot back around Facundo, or excuse me, Adolfito. Trying to get to this one. He takes it down the right-hand side. He's still got control. He tries to hit a belly shot forward to his defenders. This one, it looks like it might have gotten away from him, gone over the boards. So I believe we're going to have a possession play. And, man, I'm getting so excited. This is awesome polo that we're seeing here. Yep, so it's going to be our third possession play of the day. We've had one a piece. <clears throat> excuse me. One for each team so far. This now makes two for Pilot. And it's uh, the most opportune time for them to get that. Possession. Here comes Facundo with the ball with Adolfo there to put him in the pocket. He's going to go ahead and blow past Adolfo here, and he gets away from him. Gets past midfield. Now keeps it going. He goes, gets a pick right there by Lucas Escobar. Adolfo wanting a whistle. What? Uh, I, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Well, Facundo questioning it as well here. Let's take a look at the replay. Kuno, he's going to check down, keep control. I mean, to me, he's still got control right there. Let's see the drone. Maybe it'll be a better angle here. Yeah, he comes back behind two players here. Lucas makes a great pick right there. <sighs> There's a razor fine line between a high goal play and, and a foul. And I don't know. For me, I think that's a, you know, it's six chucker, nine goals a piece on the board. I I, mm, I might have let that one go if I were. Definitely a tough one. I'm not sure here if the umpires disagree or if we have a challenge, but it doesn't seem like they're out of decision as of yet. Well, they're going to have a horse change timeout for Lucas either way. 
Oh, so maybe indeed they're just waiting for the horse change timeout. Maybe a penalty five spot hit here. Yeah, I would not expect a challenge on this. It's a, it's a penalty five from the spot. You know, risk reward matrix. What are you giving up? What are you what are you gaining? It's just a possess. It's just you know change of possession really here. But still, I don't know. Like I said, I think for me, I, I might have let that one go. Yeah, if they win the ch if pilot was to challenge and they win it, it's just a throw in. So I think you're right. Very, it would be a smart decision either way not to challenge yeah. this one and just get back and play some good defense. Dolfito hits a big shot back down the field. Look at Peke. He's got the man on his hip. He takes the ball and this is going to turn into a goal. Wow, what a play, Peke Gonzalez. This guy is just lava hot today. Yeah, great finish there off the feed from Adolfo. Either way, it's going to be a critical call there. That penalty five converted nicely by Valiente. Peque Gonzalez doing what he does best. He gets to the man early. So deadly going to goal. Three goals on the day for Peque. Two of them from the field. And Pilot have some catching up to do. Good thing is they still have plenty of time here, Toby, with four and a half minutes remaining. Here we go. Ball's back into play. It's going to be picked up here by Facundo. He's going to win this play. Facundo. He is going to try to get away from Adolfo. Adolfo's right there with him now. They don't see the ball pop out. It's going to be picked up here by Criado. Luquitas, he's going to go ahead and slap this one forward, looking for Peque because Peque is always there to receive that pass. Here he comes. Lucas Escobar gets there and takes it with him. Lucas Escobar, oh, tops that ball. And here comes Adolfo to pick it back up. <clears throat> Excuse me, Adolfito. Facundo trying to get in there to make a defensive play. Now Adolfo, he's going to drop it back here to Luquitas. Lucas hits this one back over. That'll be picked off, though, by... Zavaleta, Matias Torres, Zavaleta turning this ball back around to the inside. Matias Torres goes ahead. He breaks back to the right, right here. Zavaleta looking to tie the game back up now. He's got 342 left to go on the clock. Here's a back shot from Peke, and it's picked back up by Zavaleta. Zavaleta fires the ball back up there to Facundo, who's got the man on him. But Facundo is going to watch as it's going to be a back shot hit here cleanly by Lucas Criado. Now, Oh, what a play. Look at this. Peke's gone. If he scores here, that's going to be game. All but right now. Peke going to the goal. Here comes Adolfo with a burst of speed with an absolute racehorse underneath him. Facundo with the steal. Yeah, and another Facundo whistle here. giving the no, no, no finger right here. Yeah, Facundo not happy. They're going to say... Facundo reached, I guess, on this one. We'll have to take a look. That's what it would have appeared from that. He came together with Adolfo and then took the ball on his offside. As you said, Facundo didn't think he fouled. Let's take a look here. There's the bump. Ooh, a little behind the saddle, too. And then he takes the ball forward. Unless they're calling this one against Cambiasso. Take a look at the replay. He comes in. Ooh, that is a behind the saddle. Yeah, he wow. he gets him behind the saddle. And Facundo still... Great horse there. Didn't even budge. Still on the ball, on the line. Jeez. Let's see if they caught that. Uneven ride off. You know, and even without that, there was still some separation afterwards. Adolfo yeah, I mean, they the... bounced off each other, right? <laughs> yeah, Adolfo kind of comes in, bounces off of Facundo. He doesn't really move on that play. What a horse. Take another look. At the replay, maybe one more time if we can. Because, yeah, from the drone here, too. Again, we're privy to these replays. Look at Adolfo, a bit behind the saddle That's, on the yeah, bump. Yeah, I mean, and he just kind of goes for the back shoulder. And Facundo doesn't really move and stays on that line, in my opinion. I think, yeah, I think, I don't think, I don't think this is a, well, we'll find out here. Because I don't think this is, um, you made a great point there that Adolfo came in late on this play and, and does get him behind the saddle. Because Facundo's going with the right of way, no? I mean, yeah, he has possession. And, and, and yeah, and Adolfo tries to. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely uneven. Timeout, horse change by the umpires. So three oh nine left. Still plenty of time for a lot to happen. Yeah. Even, you know, regardless of the outcome of this penalty call here. Finals of the CV Whitney Cup. First leg of the gauntlet of polo here. Now is the time that my dad would say, turn your horse's nose into the wind, help him get some uh, 
getting more air in their lungs, get that blood oxygenated, you know, and in and, and a game that comes down to hundreds of a second, whether you win or lose a play or win or lose a game, the horse that recovers faster is going to be the one that's going to win you those games and those plays. Adolfo doesn't like the call here, I don't think, judging by his body language anyway. I, they're going to throw it in? I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. Throw. I mean, somebody has to be wrong here one way or another, for me anyway. Well, well, what what I'm thinking is if they called it against Facundo originally, the only thing that they can do is say, no, he did not foul. No, the, the, the third man in. does have the, uh, the has the ability to overrule and say, no, guys, we got this one wrong. Like, that's it should be the other way here. Moot point because Facundo is going to win this play right here, but I don't know. That's another. That's two two calls here in the six shucker that I'm I'm a little iffy about myself. Here comes Facundo with control of that ball. He's going to be challenged right here by Criado. He's going to leave it over here for Matias Torres Evaleta, who pops it back to Facundo. Facundo keeps it away from Adolfo. Now Facundo with that ball takes the ball back to the inside of those defenders. Now Adolfo tries to get back in there to do a little poaching on Facundo. He's going to break back to the right of Adolfo because Facundo knows if Adolfo gets within 52 inches of him, he can steal that ball at any moment. Now Adolfo, just like this, he gets there. Coming back, it's going to be Facundo. Look at that horse get back to him. Facundo takes off back to the left-hand side. He's going to go ahead and break past the man here. He's going to go near side, tries to keep it alive, can't do so. Neither does he. And now here comes uh, Zavaleta going to the goal. Zavaleta looking for horsepower to get away from Criado. He's got a score right here. Oh, no. I can't believe it. Tough break there. Not the time for an error for Matias Torres. Zavaleta, he's probably looking to the heavens right now, wondering how that ball got away from him. You won't see that happen too often, especially from Matias Torres. And so a whistle on the play as well here. We might have another horse change timeout. I'm not sure what the whistle was for. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Horse change timeout. The ball's out of play. We're down to just under two minutes left to go. Here's another look at it. Matias Torres Zavaleta just gets away from him, and he can't ah, get back to it on the near side of time. Looking at the goal, you know, before the ball came off the head of his mallet there, I think. Just lifting your head a little too early. But regardless, Valiente knocking here, it looks like everybody's back out on the field. Okay, Facundo. Excuse me, Adolfo. Brings the ball back into play on the knock and He hits it down the straight right down here for Criado. Criado's going to send this one off to the right. Now, Matias has Peke under control right here. He's going to beat him. Now he's going to wait for Peke to commit. He'll turn it back to the outside here. He takes the man back, comes back to that ball on the near side, on the offside. He's going to go ahead and Bob's doesn't want to get – oh, Peke with the steal right here. Peke is going to get cooked on the play. Adolfo, well done. Good job, Bob. Taking out, Adol or taking out Facundo there for just a second. Adolfo, oh, that one got away from him, but he's able to get right back to it. And Matias Torres is on Adolfo. Adolfo launches this one back towards the goal, and here comes Escobar for the defense. Lucas, he's going to leave it for Facundo. Facundo's got Bob Janavas coming in to put him in the pocket. He's going to get away. Now, one goal difference on the board. Here comes Facundo. Drops it back to Lucas, who gets called off by... Matias Torres have a lot of time running down. They're down to around a minute left to go here as Facundo, as Matias finally gets some breathing room here. Matias Torres, Zavaleta must have Facundo totally held up behind him here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now he's going to try to run past it. Look at Adolfo. He's right there. He's got Matias Torres in his sight. Look at, yeah, well done. Pilot, Curtis Pilot trying to lay a pick on Adolfo. He got just enough of a pick on Adolfo for Matias Torres to get away from him. Zavaleta coming in. Zavaleta right here. He's got that ball. He's on the handlebars. He pushes it forward. Matias Torres, Zavaleta, they got to give him one play. He's going to shoot. He's going to score right here. No, he missed it. I can't oh believe it. Oh, my goodness, Toby. He missed it wide left. Zavaleta. Oh. He's going to be losing sleep after Less this Less than 30 game. seconds to go. Two misses. I feel terrible for him, but wow. Brutal time to miss that one. Dolphito. He had a shot. One time over to the left. They're running out of time here. Huge shot. That that shot right there just won the game for Valiente. They just became the winners of the 2023 CV Whitney Cup. First leg of the gauntlet of polo. I cannot believe it. Wow, what a heartbreaker here for 
uh, pilot. 2023, a good year for the trophy cabinet for those two kids right there, Criado and Gonzalez. Truth. What a game right there. Valiente pull it out. Tough, tough loss for Pilot. The defending champions have to hand over the trophy to Valiente here, Toby. What a fantastic final, as we predicted, a one-goal contest here. Really, really exciting stuff. And Valiente, welcome back to the gauntlet. Yeah, really, man. CV Whitney Cup champions here in 2023. Man, okay, so that's, I mean, just unbelievable play from Peke. For me, I think Peke, he's got to be MVP. Ar my, I mean, Arguably, know. I think you could say Peke MVP for sure. I know Lukitas was their high scorer, but a brunt of those from the penalty two line. Peke, certainly all around good game. I clutch, mean, clutch game, you know. You know, Adolfo always plays 10 goals. Yeah, exactly. Peke I mean, Gonzalez really had a great, great game. He just made such a difference, you know, every time. Valiente got on a, you know, on a, in any kind of an offensive situation. Peke's always there pushing, pushing, pushing. That's why he's been so effective on this whole season with Iconica and with Valiente is because they always got that target up there. And once he gets the ball, man, he runs and he almost doesn't miss. You know, I mean, he's just playing so well. And like we said at the beginning of the game, Adolfo, when he, you know, wh whoever plays with Adolfo Cambiasso, it's something he's done for the past 30 years. His teammates always play at least a goal better. So congratulations to Valiente. What a big win for them. Heartbreaker here for, for Pilot. Um, they just they just could not they could not get away from from Valiente and the defensive work that they did here today. Yeah, and again, two good chances at the end of the game. Heartbreaking misses there for Pilot and Matias Torres Zavaleta. As I said, I you know he's got to be losing some sleep over those misses tonight. He's got to be so happy. And on the flip side, yeah, congratulations to Bob Jernavis. I know he's been aching to get back into the high goal scene, the polo scene, after some years away. So big win here for Bob Jernavis and this Valiente team. And again, Peke Gonzalez, Lucas Criado, I don't know if they've missed a final, let alone lose a final. Yeah, good so point. So far in 2023, these kids are on fire. And what a force this Valiente team is going to be going forward here in the gauntlet. Hey, if there's a team that could potentially repeat pilot's feet in 2019 of sweeping the gauntlet. It could be this Valiente team right here, Toby. I think you're right. And yeah, so the last time that we had a, uh, a team, uh, you know, sweep the entire gauntlet, become the gauntlet of polo champions was in 2019. Like you just said, uh, they were, they did it undefeated that year. Well, Valiente could be the next team to do that. Just that's a very good point that you make. So let's take a look at our final stats right now and see what we've got going on. Look at Bob taking some pictures there. That's so great. I'm so excited for him. He's, you know, just coming back now. Okay. Wow. It's amazing how many shots on goal both teams missed here. Their percentages have gone way down from their preliminary games, both teams. Absolutely. And, well, I think maybe just a little added pressure here in the finals. Again, good defense from both teams. Valiente got off to a slow start. You saw Pilot having some trouble you know, in the second and third chucker, and then again, missing some goals in that final chucker. Otherwise, as the score line indicates, very even throughout the game. And look at Pilot. They did a really good job in the second half on their throw-ins because at halftime, Valiente, I think they were up 6-3, to three, doubled up on the throw-ins. Yep. So credit part of that comeback, Pilot comeback to those throw-ins. But at the end of the day, Valiente just able to hang on. Well... We've already talked about best, you know, most valuable player today. I mean, you know, I think my, my pick has got to be Peke. Um, Horse, what do you got for best playing pony in your oh, opinion there, Cody? A, that's a tough one. Again, Toby, I mean, Facundo had a great fourth chucker on Mega Espia, getting his guys back into the game. But, I mean, on the flip side, hey, Peke had a nice six chucker on Carpaccio, who he highlighted. To be honest, Toby... I might go with Mega. Yeah, I might go with Mega Espia, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it up to the guys field side who are picking because what a tough job that would be to pick a best playing pony here today. I mean, really, with this much, <laughs> it's a very good point, you know. But I'm just out of curiosity, wanted to see what you thought about that. Well, we'd actually too, if any of our fans are still yeah, around, yeah, stick around. Are, you are gonna see the trophy presentation coming up. You can write some comments in on who you think today's MVP should be and who the best playing pony should be as well. We'd love to hear what you guys have to think about that as well. For sure. All right. Well, uh, stick around, though, because we're going to be right back for the trophy presentation. And then, uh, yeah, we'd love to uh, we'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Let us know in the comments section here who your MVP and best playing ponies are. And um, 
We're gonna go. We're gonna yeah. We're gonna go to a quick break here. Come back. Show you the trophy presentation, the celebration, and then Cody and I'll come back on to, to sign off the broadcast. So stay with us. We'll be back in just a minute. In a minute.
Fergus Gould making the award to these umpires, and the award today is a round of golf, so when these guys aren't in the saddle, they're out on the links, especially uh, chemo. So let's hear it for our umpires, and uh, what, a, what a fair match they, they umpired today. It was a great job, two great teams, two great umpires on the field, the rest of the staff doing a hell of a job out there. Thanks to Fergus Gould and his Umpires LLC. So now, as soon as we get the players, we'll bring our best playing pony up. You're here? All right. Let's get the Valiente team. If Bob Genavis, if you'll bring the Valiente team, here he is, El Maestro, Adolfo Cambiaso. Quito Criado. Becky Gonzalez, making that great goal down there to put his team ahead. And Bob Giannavis. Okay. Let's give him a big round of applause. Now, Curtis Pilot. Curtis, if you bring your gang up here. Curtis Pilot. Lucas Escobar. Matias Torres Zabaleta, which I kept calling Diego Cavanaugh early on. And Facu Pires. Let's give both teams a big, big, big round of applause. What a final, what a way to end this tournament, the first leg of the Gauntlet Series. And now we're going to call upon Cecilia Cochran, Cecilia Cochran, one of our governors at large. First award will go to Mega Espia, uh, owner of Facundo Pérez. This is the best polo, best Argentine polo, Cria Polo Argentina. So if we can bring Mega Espia, Facundo Pires, the owner and rider. And here comes the proud handlers of Mega Espia. She wants to give you her good side. While we Mega Espia, owned and ridden by Facundo Pérez, best polo Argentine pony of the final. Our next award, Cecilia Cochran will be making this award as well to so our Pacha. I can, I can zoom in now. Ridden by Peque Gonzalez. Along with the best playing pony blanket, and they'll get a commission photograph from Melinda Brewer. So, Carapaccio, Carapaccio. All right, let's see it for Capacho. Owned and written by Pepe Gonzalez. Cecilia Corcoran, one of our governors at large of the United States Polo Association, making this award. And now we're going to call upon Michael Prince and Shannon Stilson of USPA Global Entertainment and Global Licensing to make the runners-up charity check. This will be presented to Polo Player Support Group. And Ginny Orthwine will be receiving this check on behalf of the Polo Player Support Group. So the pilot team elected to donate their charity check to Polo Players Support Group.
Congratulations, Jay. Congratulations, Polo Player Support Group. And next, our winner's charity check uh, will be donated to the Polo Museum. Again, presenters, Michael Prince and Sharon Stilson. Sorry about that, I skipped the page, they stuck together. We'll give that one later. The runners-up trophy, we're gonna call upon Whitney Miller Douglas and Royal Douglas III. Whitney, a granddaughter, I believe, of C.D. Whitney. Whitney's dad, Lev Miller, longtime polo player, and also a member of the Polo Museum. So, making the awards first to the pilot squad, first to Curtis Pilot. Beautiful Tom Balding custom handmade bits. And a beautiful box to commemorate it. Next to Lucas Escobar. Whitney and Royal making this award. Lucas Escobar receiving his trophy. Next to Matias Torres on the left side. And last but not least, Facundo Pires receiving his trophy from Whitney and Royal. And uh, next we're going to call on Michael Prince and Shannon Stilson again to make the winner's charity check. Valiente has designated the Polo Hall of Fame and Museum as their recipient. Stuart Armstrong. Excuse me, we'll be up next, but right now it's Marty Craig, George and Brenda DuPont, along with Michael Prince, the whole Valiente team, and Shannon Stilson. So as we're handing out checks, the next check will be awarded by USPA Chairman Stuart Armstrong, the winner's check. Presented by Stuart Armstrong and Michael Prince to the Valiente team. Bob, if you'll bring your team forward again. Big round of applause for Valiente. The winner is receiving their winner's check from Mr. Stuart Armstrong, chairman of the USPA, and Michael Prince. Polo Global Licensing. It looks like Stewart not only signed the check, but he's not giving it up. <laughs> Taking the check with him. Okay. Now we're going to call upon uh, Whitney and Royal again to make the... <laughs> Winner's trophies, Chris Curley Spurs, handmade Spurs by Chris Curley, and first two, Bob Janavis, Bob Janavis, and captain and owner. Next to Peque Gonzalez, beautiful. Curly Spurs. Next to Luquitos Criados. Luquitos <laughs> Criados. Receiving his Curly Spurs. 
Last but not least, Adolfo Cambiaso. AC number six. All right, now Whitney and Royal are going to stay right there and make the award to our MVP. Our MVP this afternoon is Pecky Gonzalez. A fly polo gift card and an Apple Watch. This is the trophy to Pecky Gonzalez from Whitney and Royal. Pecky Gonzalez, the most valuable player of the finals this afternoon. And now, we're going to invite the Valiant, excuse me, the pilot team down. And we've got the Perpetual Cup, the C.B. Whitney Cup, to the 2023 winners. Valiente, Bob Genavis, Pecky Gonzalez, Luquito Criado, and Adolfo Cambiasso. <laughs> Big round of applause. Valiente, the winner of the 2023 C.B. Whitney Cup. A big thank you to Royal and Whitney for making the awards. And now we'll get a photo of the team with the Perpetual Cup. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Valiente, the victorious Valiente team of the 2023 C.B. Whitney Cup. Whoa, boys! <laughs> Good reflexes, Becky. All right, let's give a big round of applause. And now let's give yourselves a big round of applause for coming on out. If you like what you saw and saw what you like, come on out here every Sunday. Sunday. For tuning in, I just want to uh, quickly touch on a couple more points here. First of all, Cody, congratulations on your OT prediction. You got that correct? That we did. And then we were right on our OT. Uh, well, we, you were right on the OT, and then we were right on our MVP and best playing pony picks there. I'm happy about that too. And uh, yeah, any final words? Yeah, Mega Espia, Carpaccio, both being awarded there. And look at that, our MVP pick, Pekka Gonzalez. He even caught the trophy when it was starting to fall there at the end. Toby, can't say enough about this team and these young superstars, Peke and Luquitas. Of course, Adolfo Cambiasso adding another trophy to the cabinet. Well done, Bob Jernavis and this Valiente team. They're going to be a force here for the remainder of the gauntlet. They sure are. Well, heartbreaker there for, for Pilot. Congratulations, though. They played a great game. Congratulations once again to Valiente. For Cody Off, and I'm Toby Wayman. Thanks so much for tuning in to the USP Polo Network, and we will see you at our next broadcast.